and uh, chat settings. We'll do those in a sec. Check, check. Sound good. Sweet. Chat. Oh, this is uh, YouTube. You are in the left speaker only, I believe, Rob. Yeah. Yeah, you just whispered in my left ear, Rob. Oh, no, I, uh, I really don't like that. Uh, yeah, better. Better. start better. webinar. <laughs> that was visceral. You got a little tingly there. Yeah, I did. I got the my hair on the back I when I mixed it, it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bit of ASMR to kick things off. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Welcome. And the doors to are it. open. First, oh, so close. Kevin, almost. So close, Kevin. Yeah, sorry, Kevin. Sorry. No cookie gonna, for you. I'm going to have to boot him now. Yeah, sorry, dude. So close. <laughs> Not fast enough. Third. <laughs> I like the first. You better, <laughs> you better make it. It's like, no. Right. What's up, beautiful people? What's up? What's up? Welcome to Thursday. Welcome to Thursday. I like Thursdays. Let's go. Thursday has a natural sort of energy just because of its proximity to Friday. It does. It really does. That I do enjoy. I would submit that Thursday feels more like a hump day than Wednesday. I know the, you know, the middle of the week, the week thing is why we do Wednesday, but I feel the hump. Thursday. Oh, really? I feel it Wednesday. Well, you know, that's the old way of thinking. See, I enjoy my job, so I don't feel the hump. I know this is torture for you. I feel the hump. <laughs> Let's do a topic change. <laughs> Another Not winner shot for you. So we've established this week that Jake cats, hates cats, loves dog. Skinning yeah. a thousand cats to save one dog. That's uh, yeah, I don't get it. I, I just never really got that they can like walk around in their own litter and then jump up on your counter and people are like, oh, it's like disgusting. They self-clean and they're... Oh my gosh, for people to tell me they self-clean. Self-clean. I, I self-clean. Their saliva yeah. is acidic. It's actually very sterile. Like they self-clean. Do dogs self-clean? This is oh, like the classic definitely. cat line I always get where they're like, oh, they clean themselves. They roll around in their litter box and then they walk on my kitchen table and I'm like, oh, they self-clean. They don't roll around in their litter box. <laughs> they daintily enter. They dust <laughs> their feet off after. Then they sterilize with acidic saliva. Oh, they dust their feet off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no matter how clean they get, my face is still getting itchy. Mm. Uh, that's why I love snakes, says someone. Oh, Kaylee I had a nightmare Lord. about snakes last night. You did? I did. It wasn't a nightmare. It was just like an eerie, you know, I didn't like wake up in like a, a cold sweat, like, you know, kind of nightmare. But it was just a creepy, creepy dream. I was carrying around just like a box of snakes. Why? Why? Oh, C Caleb and Rob, I actually have, I, I, there was a massive, massive spider on my car side view mirror yesterday. Really? So I got that, I got the salt gun for everybody who doesn't know. I, it's a gun that shoots salt for killing bugs. Oh yeah. And I took it outside and I, I was pumping rounds into it while it was on the ground, just clobbering with salt that's fine right? take it down yeah. i was in nashville last week and i'm at michael's place and he <laughs> he pulls out this nerf gun i think it's a nerf gun it's a salt gun for shooting flies i thought that was the coolest thing i gotta get me one of those it's freaking sick you can skeet shoot them out of the sky i never take the fight outdoors because that's their territory like i will never just go out and shoot them for sport but if they're in the house that's when because my dog katie hates flies in the house so Somebody asked, can you use that salt gun for shooting fries? <laughs> oh. 
That's not bad idea. Clever, clever. That's how I garnish uh, our dinner at night. Your I meals. walk up to Melanie's uh, table and I, yeah, she hates it. Yeah. It's like, I'm just envisioning like a nice, like candlelit dinner, yeah. you know, like out on the terrace, like beautiful scenery. I'm like, yeah. or with his Nerf gun. <laughs> Can you pass the salt? <laughs> my, my wife, you would think that it's like a full blown absolute weapon because the second i pick it up she like hides and i'm like it's salt it's not gonna hurt you i did shoot myself in the foot with it, it yeah it it's uh it's powerful it actually yeah. it, it stung a little bit you should have seen the spider when i hit it it i mean it went a good couple feet hmm. and then i chased it down put a couple more rounds in it on the concrete nick allegro with the <laughs> gosh he's just so good he's so on salt and battery oh nice okay Nice, Nick. <laughs> that is too early in the morning for uh, for that kind of humor. So no. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Amazing. Nick strikes me as the type of guy who's up around 5 a.m. Is that true, Nick? He's he's L'd OL so far. Yeah, yeah. There's a few people from our program in the chat we, that we know, so Nick's one of those. He always sounds like a bot because he's always saying how much he loves the program, but he's a real human. He's a dude. Yep. So spoken, he's no Ryan. I've spoken with his no face. Ryan. Human dude. Ryan, our AI bot, was hung over and got the text out late. <laughs> so now he's getting fired. So Nick, you're back. Nick GPT. Ryan gave me false information, by the way. Ah, oh, dang. What? In progress. No. Come on. Uh, Brian. What, what, what did information say? did he give you? I need more. Don't I worry, guys. You. We're 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 gonna start soon. We're just gonna <laughs> we're gonna chat a little bit <laughs> so we can have a chance to let people there in. He goes. I was gonna say I saw I saw that Ryan did tell some people it would take eight hours and I corrected him. Okay, good. So he'll never say that again. Don't worry. Eight, eight hours to what? <laughs> That each session would be eight hours. So eight hours through three, three days in a row. We can do it. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Who wants an eight hour session today? <laughs> Nobody. Ryan is uh locked up in the, Look at the that. dungeon with Dean. They want more. They're glad oh, that's sweet. punishment. Wait, is this ones for Ryan? This is ones, no, ones for, for eight, hours. eight hour session today. Oh, okay. And I realize I'm in good company. I don't have a life either. Oh <laughs> eights in chat. Eight hour vocal mixing. Yeah, that was, was that, it? did it end up being even longer than eight hours when we did vocal production challenge? No. That was a long but one. It was like five or six. Because we recorded all those backups. We did the whole thing live. Did it you already fun. mix it or is this the first time that's going to get mixed today? This, this is uh, real work, this is real it. time. This is work for the client. Nice. Yep, it, this is the uh, official mix that will. Ryan told me he would be sending us all pizza. <laughs> Ryan's pizza. drunk. How much is a pizza? Twenty dollars. Did you take a note on that? It costs about twelve grand. Well, send everyone here pizzas. Okay. Just, just put your address in the chat. No, don't do that, guys. Don't really do that. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen someone asking for social security numbers. Where is Warren? I'm not sure where Warren is today. He's traveling somewhere. He travels a lot. Where in the world is Warren here? I will tell you this that's cool, though. We're not just using AI to, to chat with y'all. We actually built... Can I talk about this, Rob? Yeah. We we actually built an AI for our, for our uh, school. And we had it read all of our content. We're, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of videos and documents and lectures we had it read all of that so our students can literally go if they can't remember something they can literally go to this chat bot that we have in the school and and get the the, the answer to it like within seconds it's pretty sweet yeah it's pretty awesome it's amazingly good too totally different to what chat gpt will say it only knows our program it doesn't know any doesn't know anything else yeah, yeah it only right. knows can I just say, like, who, who realistically, who else is doing this kind of stuff? 
Like this is free for three days. We we do hours and hours each day. We've got the AI chat bot for the students. Who else is doing this? Not to drink the own Kool-Aid of my own company, but like, honestly. We got the comedy bombs here. You can kind of get away with it, Michael, because you were a client first. Caleb was a yeah. client first. So you're yeah, either scammed performance. myself. That's what people, they're always like, well, how do I know you guys are who you say you are? And I'm like, well, I either scammed myself because <laughs> I was a student <laughs> or it works. That's great. And then they so these are the highlight of my month. There's nothing more fun than getting on with you guys for a whole week and doing this. Yeah, I love the hang, man. I just love the hang. And you're all always cool. There's no one ever in the chat that's like being a jerk to everybody. It's because we're all just musicians. We're all just trying to figure it out and be better. And I think I think the chat always goes sideways when when people feel like they've gotten ripped off. And that's why we always do three days of like value. Just come and judge us based on our actual merits, and that's why the pa- the chat is always so positive here. Yeah, well, we're glad to do it. We'll go. We'll go like one more minute and get started. Y'all are jerks. Y'all are. Jer- no, that's what I. Was <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> y'all are jerks. <laughs> I know. Uh, VIP link for tomorrow. Yep, I can post that again. It's going to be a fun session. We're just giving it. Tomorrow in, uh another Thanks. minute or so Thanks one of our students tracks that'll be fun it's a really yeah good warren track. warren's gonna be there for a couple of hours tomorrow as well for the vip session oh boy vip session with warren nice does anybody know first of all one's in the chat if anybody is into that show solar opposites There were ones in the chat before you even finished the question, so I don't even know (laughs) what that's all about. (laughs) Okay, does anybody know, like, the real... I I know why, like, in the story, the Corvo's voice changes, but does anybody know in real life why his voice is different, has been changed? Is it because Justin Roiland left the project? Is this just a totally random... You're just crowdsourcing information. Didn't he get canceled? (laughs) Did Justin Roiland get canceled? He did? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think he left. Why? I don't know. Oh, accused of... Yeah. Domestic violence? Domestic... Billion X. (laughs) That sounds critical. Domestic billion X. Domestic situation. Oh, no. Oh, it's wild. Depends if anyone cares. Jeez, Nick. (laughs) He's taking the Ryan news hard. Someone said salt. Wow. Salt and battery just made my day. Sorry. Okay, we still have people shuffling in, so maybe like one more minute. Oh, freaking Morty too. No way. No way. Oh, that's that's gonna affect that. This is really sad. I'm sad now. Jake, give me a number. I want to see if I can beat everybody typing a number. Okay, nine hundred thirteen thousand four hundred and thirty-two. Ah, oh. Michael, you were I screwed one, it two, up. three, four, five, sixth. I know. I, I screwed it up. Give me one more. All right. 23,432,777. Dang. You still weren't first. There are some people That's... up there with, with like data from Star Trek fingers. They're just I know. It's not because I can't do it. It's because I get nervous. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, that. but I get uh, my heart it's starts like, oh. beating like crazy. <laughs> this the pressure I put on myself <laughs> to perform in that situation is rem- remark <laughs> the intrusive <laughs> thoughts and wow, imposter syndrome. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, Beavers. can't be the best of everything, well. Michael. Yeah. With that, yeah. should we get started, y'all? Should we do this thing? Yeah, just a simple one in the chat would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to have you back for day three. Mm. What a valuable day this will be. Working on vocals. Vocals are so important. And uh, obviously we've said this before, it's the, it's the thing that will make your mixes sound 
very expensive if you can pull it off. And this will get you a lot of work if you can really become expert at mixing vocals. So we're going to spend a whole day on it. We didn't used to do this. This is the first time in the Fix the Mix Challenge that we've done this. We're doing a whole day just on vocals because we think it's that important. So let's dive into that. Yeah, this is new. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Again, introductions. I'm the director of education for mastering.com. If you're new for day three, some people just show up for day three. They're like, the hell with day one and two. Let's get to day three. We have Michael Gilbride, the general manager from mastering.com. Wave, Michael. He's the reason you're all here. He's sending out the incessant emails and texts and reminders, but it's because we love you and we want you to be here. We got Jake Codewise. He's been doing the demonstrations all week. He's worked with tons of major artists. He's a mix and mastering engineer. He has done a ton in the licensing world, 15 active licenses over the years. He was signed out of the womb pretty much right from birth. We're signing record deals. Sign that kid. <laughs> Sign that kid. And then Robert, Mr. Rob Mazes, he's been doing this a long time. If you haven't seen his YouTube videos, you've probably not been on YouTube studying music at all. He's hundreds and hundreds of videos in the last almost 10 years as one of the faces of people uh, educating online for uh, engineering and production. And he is the CEO of mastering.com. Grace said also all the ads, lol. That's also true. It used to be me. And thankfully, I don't have to see my face every time I get on YouTube anymore. It's Rob that has to deal with that. That's great. If you've been around for a while, though, you'll remember my ads. All right. If introductions, just in case you wanted to know who we were. Warren's not here with us today. I guess he's traveling. Also want to shout out to Waves. They're sponsoring this, so this could be a totally free event for all of you. They're one of our uh, official partners. If you look on our website, we have some other partners. Waves is one of them. We appreciate uh, them and their generosity making this free for you. So one's in chat for them. Really appreciate those guys down there being willing. And this was kind of a last minute when they stepped up. They made it work. All right. Yesterday, who did the homework? 109 in the chat, if you did the homework. Thirty-six in chat if the if you're as Rob joked, the DA ate your homework. Hope you had some fun though. It's all about uh, learning in different phases, right? So I I give presentations and then we watch it visually from Jake. So you're getting the uh, the the audio learning, you're getting the visual learning, but then there's kinesthetic learning, which is you going in and actually attempting to do the stuff that you've been learning, which is very important too. And all three of those can really connect holistically for your learning. So I hope you took an opportunity to get in there and at least play around with some of this stuff that we're talking about. What you should have done though is you know, you've done your volume only mix. Now it's time to go in and fix any remaining issues. Okay. We're fixing problems first. We're going in and deciding the stuff that couldn't be solved with volume. We're using tools like EQ to go in and, and fix those and then enhance where necessary. Where do we need to add certain frequencies? What, what part of the balance of the frequency range is missing? How can we add those in? How can we make our kicks punch a little harder? All this type of stuff. And the same thing with dynamics tools is everything within, uh, you know, nice parameters for transients. We did that little, uh, if you missed it yesterday at the very end, Jake pulled out a tool and we were testing transients to make sure that they were all within bounds. The only things that were really sticking out were uh, those marching snares and the S's on the vocal which we haven't treated yet so of course those are sticking out and the whole point of all of that was that if you send something with with crazy transients to a mastering engineer it makes it harder for them to give you something that sounds great because they're having to deal with uh, you know a, ma a mastering compressor should just be that final glue to a track not having to solve problems like uh, wild transients so we're solving those in the mix and then you can enhance with dynamics tools as well. And hopefully you were able to add some spatial processing as well. Get some reverbs on there. Did any of you try the, the bucket method? What did you think of that? Ones in chat, if you, if you tried the, the bucket method, what did you think of that? Was it interesting? 
Did it give you a nice mindset or methodology to go through that part of the process, which can sometimes be confusing? What'd you think? Was it interesting? Hopefully. That's a good way to approach it. We'll do some more of that today. I know that we didn't give a great demonstration on that because there was already a ton of reverb baked into the track from those lousy producers those. Who, who produced this track. <laughs> Just baking <laughs> stuff in. Yeah, it's our problem. And then post your upgraded mix to school. I saw some people do that. So that's wonderful. And I hope you're enjoying the school community, your, your opportunity to interact with each other, your opportunity to, to network with each other. You know, it's something we pay for just so that you can have a place to do that. I think it's easy in this world to feel like a, a bit of an island as we all have our kind of our home studios these days. It's awesome to have community and to be able to interact with other people who are trying to do what you're doing. Everyone's been keeping it super positive in that school group too, which is great Loves too. The best way to network is to just help other people. Absolutely. All right. And the big picture concepts for day two were when to be less aggressive with EQ and when to be more aggressive with EQ. That's really what it's about. We did some uh, massive EQ cuts when we were carving out mid-range. Sometimes it's more of a subtle move. To know the difference is really important. We have to use our ears, but we're also using some referencing tools, some measurement tools, uh, the PAS analyzers and others to see where the trouble spots were. We pulled that up towards the end of the session. We found that we still had mud in the mid-range. So we go in there and we carve out a little bit more to where we can get that tamed and under control. And the, all that together is helping us move towards getting a very balanced mix, something that we could send to a mastering engineer and have them be able to really send it to the moon. We had a, a nice uh, introduction into clipping versus limiting versus compression, using clipping and limiting more to, to tame transients, and then obviously compression more to enhance. We're going to do some more of that today. That's going to be part of the demonstration again. Space buckets. Should have a movie called Space Buckets. I don't know what it would be about, but it would be about something great. But in this case, we're talking about spatial buckets where we uh, broke things out into different types of reverbs. Not too many, but just enough to give variety, to get separation between all the instruments without it sounding chaotic. And I hope you're able to play with that. And then uh, assessing dynamics. Again, we did that at the very end, making sure that none of our transients were way out of control. So that's what we learned yesterday. Today, it's a similar thing, but it's all about the vocal. It's all about the vocals today, a deep dive, a three hour, four hour session, however long we need to go, all about making these vocals sound perfect. They already sound great, but how do we make those sound top 40 great? The kind of thing that, that clients will pay for. And we're gonna show you some really important stuff with this today. There's stuff that the pros are doing that you may not know about. That's the stuff we're gonna really focus on today. And in addition, we're also gonna be controlling frequencies with the vocals. Obviously we wanna control the dynamics and then get a really nice spatial processing going for uh, these vocals. Also want to talk to you a little bit more about the mastering mindset. I've given you a couple little nuggets on mastering every day. Obviously, we have this unique perspective in that we train mastering engineers for a long time. We learned a lot from teaching mastering. If you've missed the other days, pretty much what we learned is that, that uh, these mastering engineers, when they would... Uh, learn mastering and in the process of learning mastering there was something about that end in mind perspective that was helping their mixes and even their productions grow i'll talk about that more a little bit later but uh the more mastering mindset we can have that more the more end in mind perspective that we have uh there's a lot of value there and i think we've already seen that i hope you've picked up on that through the week how much having something in mind about how a mastering engineer is going to receive your files can help you give them something that will uh, allow them to do their job and give you something back that will actually be better than uh, what it's been before. So that's really cool. Let's do a little bit of mastering mindset. <clears throat> Power of objectivity. See, mastering isn't creative. Mastering is, is objective. It is not subjective. We're looking at things at a very technical level when we're mastering. And so it's a, a little bit of this technicality that we need to keep in mind as we go through the, uh, the rest of the process. But I want to encourage all of you, and I want to break some myths and some things you've probably heard about, especially those of you who are self-producing artists, right? 
I want to dispel a myth with all of you who are self-producing artists that you've heard, which is you cannot mix and master your own material. Who's heard that? One's in chat if you've heard, you cannot mix and master your own material. Lots of ones. And I think the 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 reason behind that and what people will say is it's better to hand it off to someone with what? Fresh ears, right? We want someone a new perspective uh, and fresh ears. And so I see the wisdom behind that. And I think there are times when that's probably the thing to do. But it is a myth that you can't. And I know that just because I've I've taught mixing and mastering to many, many people, and especially I've taught it to many self-producing artists. And I found that something happens if you get good enough at mixing and mastering, and if you get good enough at compartmentalizing the processes, if you approach things correctly, which means using different sessions, which means approaching each session with a different mindset, which means holding yourself accountable to an objective anchor, all these things mixed together. If approached correctly, what I've seen is that a self-producing artist who knows how to do this process can actually mix and master better than anyone else because they contain the vision of that final product that they're going for. If they have that end in mind of the vision that they're going for, there's no one else that can really tap into that as well as they can. And there are dangers and pitfalls, but if you learn to do it properly, it can be a, an incredible tool for you. I've learned this because I've uh, mastered, mixed and mastered for people, and it was a good mix and master but they knew how to do it too. And they would have that vision. And so they would do another one. And I, and I'd realized they had something there that I didn't tap into as much. They actually were able to take it farther. And that was really, it's really interesting to see. So it is a myth that you can't do your own material. We just have to approach it the right way. Just like anything else, you have to learn how to do it. And there's value in learning it anyway, even if you don't mix and master your own stuff, Learning the end in mind, this, this thing I keep harping on with mastering, it will inform your productions. What happens is when you get that end in mind perspective, again, you, you, you learn all the mistakes that were made through the entire process. There's stuff you're doing either right or wrong from the very first moment you press record all the way through production and all the way through mixing. And when you learn that end in mind, you realize all the stuff that mastering engineers have to deal with that are really hard. And you start to self-reflect about the rest of the process. These mistakes I'm making during mixing, these mistakes I'm making during production, you're able to fill in those gaps and refine the process so that you can go all the way through the process and give that final mastering an opportunity to be great. So there's something about learning this end in mind. And again, we learned this through years of experience and working with mastering engineers who would say to us time and time again, I'm not just learning mastering, but my mixes are getting way better. My production's getting way better. And these are people who had been doing it for 20, 30 years who were total pros who had worked with A-list artists who were saying, this is helping my entire process grow. And we realized we were really onto something here. It gives you that end in mind perspective and it unlocks creativity. This is something I haven't talked about as much. But when we work with our students in our program, uh, we're starting with mastering. We teach them this technical foundation. We make sure their room is really dialed in. Their ears are at a very, very high level. Their understanding of the tools is very deep. They have this holistic perspective about everything. And they get so sharp with this that all of that technical stuff becomes instinctual. And that's really the goal. It has to, at some point, become instinctual. And what happens when it becomes instinctual, for those of you who create, for those of you who are producers, when the techno becomes instinctual, the creativity is unlocked. Because what happens a lot of times when the technical isn't instinctual is that we have these creative windows of opportunity, this inspiration come to us, creativity comes to us, and we have this window to to execute on that. It's, it doesn't last forever. It's not ongoing. If, if you've ever created, you know that sometimes the inspiration comes and it's there for a second and it's gone. And when, when, when there's technical hurdles, when we don't really understand what we're doing, when we're doing too much knob turning, when we're, we're going down rabbit holes, we miss these windows of opportunity. So this technical understanding that we deepen ourselves in, it doesn't diminish our creativity, it unlocks our creativity so that when these moments of opportunity come, we know exactly how to get the sounds we have in our head to come out of the speakers. 
So there's a ton of power in learning this technical stuff, but it's not the stuff that's the most fun. It's the stuff that mostly gets skipped over by people. So I want to empower uh, all of you, if you're a self-producing artist or whether you want to get into mix and mastering, this is something you're really going to want to learn more about. And if you're a mix engineer, <clears throat> I want to make a little note. People always love me talking about this. How many of you who are mix engineers uh, give a free master with your mixes? One's in chat. I can't see the chat. I assume what? a few. It's really easy to just say, oh, I'll just master it, right? I'll just throw a limiter on or whatever else you're going to do. But let's talk about the economy of mastering a little bit and the reason why you should probably stop doing that. You need to compartmentalize those two different processes and you need to charge for them separately. If you're mixing, the goal is, and the goal we have with our students anyway, is to get their mixing down to something that they can do in four to six hours, even a big project, and charge at least four to six hundred dollars for that, which equals a hundred dollars an hour, right? Which is good money. Everyone happy with a hundred dollars an hour? I'm pretty happy with a hundred dollars an hour. We want to get our mixing down to that point and do a good job. Uh, and that's pretty leveraged. But look at mastering. What people don't realize is that mastering takes training to learn. But as I demonstrated even in day one, once you know how to do it, it doesn't have to take a long time to do. And we train our students to get to the point where they can master a track in 10 to 15 minutes. Imagine what that could do to your bottom line if you're running a company with mixing or mastering, if you're not offering that as a separate thing or maybe not even offering it at all. Mastering is 10 to 50 minutes. We charge $75 to $100 an hour for it. So our dollar per hour is four to $500 per hour. It is the, the most leveraged dollar per hour of anything you could do. Production takes a long time. You get paid big bucks, but it takes forever. Mixing is pretty good. Mastering is the best dollar per hour of anything you could be doing. And if you're not charging for that separately, or if you don't even offer that at all, you're really shooting yourself in your foot about your, uh, with respect to your bottom line. This is something you should be adding in. I even have artists in the program who don't want to be mix and mastering engineers who learned mastering because they went through the program and went, I'm actually pretty good at this. I'm going to do mastering on the side to support my artist profile. So they take on maybe, t you know, 10 clients a month, you know, and support and pay for their whole artist profile with something that doesn't take them very long. They're, they're maybe doing, you know, five to 10 hours of mastering a month and making enough to live on and support their artist profile. So I just want to give that little tidbit. I think it's really interesting. A lot of people don't realize the, the value of it. Of course, it takes time to learn mastering and to become proficient at that, but I think that's super valuable. Anyone find that valuable and interesting? All right, enough about mastering. I do love to go on on about it. I, I am very passionate about mastering. I think it's a really valuable tool to know and understand with the end in mind perspective it gives you and how much it's helped me personally grow in my career. So I do, I do like to go on about it, but let's switch gears to mixing. I'm not gonna give you a ton today because we've already talked about EQ, what the, the uh, intention of EQ is and what the intention of compression is. The thing I want to come back to, and this is a slide I had on day one, is gain automation. So Jake, we didn't do this on day one. We were gonna maybe do it, but we decided to do it on day three. And we've talked in, uh, a lot about how the pros are using this gain automation to control transients and to bring out character in the vocal before they ever do any compression. And I, and I believe if you've been in here in the last couple of days, you already understand what I'm talking about with this. But it's not enough with a vocal. If you really want that expensive sounding vocal, it's really not enough to just throw a compressor on there and call it good or a couple compressors or something. It was really easy to put 1176 and LA-2A on there and you call, oh, that's what the pros are doing. That's not what the pros are doing. The pros are doing one to two to three layers of gain automation before it ever gets compressed. And the reason is, is because the vocal is telling the story. If you're working on a vocal music anyway, this doesn't necessarily apply to uh, electronic music that doesn't have a vocal. But 
the vocal is generally the most important part of the song and it's telling the story. It's the thing we're connecting to. And we don't want compressors to be making the choices for us about how that sounds and when it gets compressed and not. We want it to do very little actually, just enough to kind of give it that last kiss of, of, of control. We want to go in and make sure that those moments, the story, the emotion is pulled out of the vocal in every moment we can. We want to bring up the ends of phrases so you get intimate with that last little thing that the vocal is saying. We also want to uh, tame like what's on the left-hand side, big transients. So the compressor doesn't have to do as much so that when we start compressing, it is just that last bit of glue. And, and uh, Jake's going to show you today how much character and emotion and power we can pull out of vocals when we're more intentional about the process. And this is what creates expensive vocals. So this will be a really cool thing to watch today. It's always something I, lo I love and uh, usually the students really love this stuff because this is, the, this is uh, make or break. This is where we get to make our money as uh, mix engineers. We're gonna go really deep on this today, guys. Yep. Um, and before we get to the demo, I couldn't believe how many people were asking questions yesterday about the reverse engineer. It seemed like uh, every 10 seconds there was someone asking, what is TRE? What is the reverse engineer? So I want to tell you a little bit about that before we get on with the demo today. And just take a moment of your time to talk about what we do at mastering.com. Um, why do we do this challenge in general? First and foremost, we want to bring a ton of value to our communities. I hope you feel the sincerity of that statement. And I hope you've learned in the last three days that we're pretty sincere people, that we really do want to give back. We, we don't want to hold anything back. We, we believe a lot in community. And I think that comes because, uh, you know, we have a lot of employees in this company. And I think almost all of them have seen both the good side of the industry and the bad side of the industry. Right, Rob? Right, Jake? It, there's some ugliness out there. There's some people keeping secrets. There's some people that push people down. Um, we're not about that. We don't want to be a part of that. We want to give as, as much value to our community as we can while maintaining our ability to be a company and offer a great value in what we do with our education program. It's also an opportunity for you to get to know us. We don't want you to just see an ad online and say, uh, who do I, you know, we, we see tons of that stuff. Who do we trust? Like Michael was talking about earlier. How do we know who to trust? Well, we're going to, we're just going to come hang out with you for three days and show you exactly who we are <laughs> as a company. And if you like it, great. And if you don't, great. Like you got to find the people that you love and you like in this, in this industry and who you trust. Uh, so that's why we do these uh, uh, events primarily. And then secondarily, because every time we do them, we actually find a group of people who have been looking for and who are a great fit for our, our education program, the reverse engineer. That's what TRE stands for, the reverse engineer. The reverse engineer, what is it? It's a two-year, full-stack, very immersive education program and mentorship program that is uh, built to compete with anything that's out there, the highest level stuff. We're building it to compete with anything that's come before, any of the big, really expensive programs out there. We're trying to build something better and to compete with what's been there before. And we've seen that there's some problems with how things are being taught. We feel like sometimes people are being taken advantage of. There's a lot of information that's antiquated and outdated and not able to keep up with the modern uh, music industry. And so we're, we're doing something that's more nimble. We're doing something that's uh, more affordable. We're doing something that gives you more hands-on uh, attention. And that's what the reverse engineer is. So let me tell you about a little bit about it. This is who it's for primarily. Now we do have advanced people who come into this program and we do have beginners who come into this program. I can speak to that a little bit, but a lot of the people we get to come in this program are stuck at what we call the intermediate plateau. What is the intermediate plateau? It happens a lot. This is something very common and there's a reason why it happens. It's the moment when your uh, technical skill isn't up to par with your creativity. You hear ideas in your head you have this great expression you want to make through music, 
but technically you're just not quite ever getting it there. You have these ideas and you try to execute on it, but what comes out of the speakers back at you, what, what gets played in the car, what gets shown to people doesn't quite connect with what you were actually trying to do. And it's, a, it's this plateau we sometimes get to that's very frustrating. I think there's a few reasons why this happens. Uh, and I want to talk about the reasons why this happens a little bit. Why do people get stuck at the intermediate plateau? And just to be clear, again, we do have advanced people who come into this program. We've had people that have come in who have worked with major, major artists who are probably names you know. And they're coming in because they just want to sharpen their tools and get perspective. And they realize the value that... Uh, that exists in always learning, right? I think if we ever think we've arrived, we are, we're, we're just starting to die, <laughs> right? That's the end of our career if we ever think we've uh, arrived. So they're coming to sharpen their tools. And we do get some beginners in the program as well, but it is designed for intermediate. So if you are a beginner, um, you have to take a real look at whether you're really ready to jump into this and give it your full effort. I think uh, if you are, it can be a great place for you. Instead of spending years and years and years getting to an intermediate plateau, we can kind of just fast track that and give you the goods and, and have you skip through that part. But it takes a little bit of extra work. It takes a little bit of extra focus. There's some supplemental learning that you have to do. That's not a problem. It's just something you need to consider. Are you really passionate about this? Are you really ready to take the plunge? But a lot of people are at the intermediate plateau. So why do we? Why do people get stuck at the intermediate plateau? And what's the problem that we're solving? We realized over the last 10 years of teaching that there are two distracting voices, very strong distracting voices in the industry that are messing people up. They're holding people back. And one is you can't, and one is it's easy. So where does you can't come from? I think if you've ever been on like gear space or somewhere like that, I don't, I don't know who like spends their days on there, but it seems like these, these older guys maybe on there who have this uh, $250,000 room and all the gear that's ever existed. It's both, it's so, group. <laughs> right. I hear all these and I get on there and, and it's like all this, like, Oh, you need this thing. And if you ever want really, you got to have these converters and you got to have this gear and you got to have this hardware and you have to have this room and you have to do all this stuff if you ever want to make uh, great music. And I'm so glad that in the last few years, this has been shattered publicly. This is, this is something that we know is not true because we had Phineas and Billie Eilish get on, get it, go in their room and win seven Grammys. So all that nonsense is, is wrong. And so we chase all this stuff that isn't correct. We get on those channels. And we think, oh, the reason I'm not able to get my stuff to that level is because I don't have these converters or this gear or something like that. It's all nonsense. If you want to get to the higher level, you just have to do the work to get there, just like with anything else. And the stuff that matters is not the gear. But we'll come back to that. The other voice is it's easy. And that comes, I think, a lot of times from YouTube, right? We get on there. How many people have been on? And it's like every, every uh, video is like, you know, three tips that if you do, you'll win a Grammy, five ch tips that'll change your life. Just do these three things and your stuff will be amazing. It just seems like every video is about that. And, and, and you get on and it's like, okay, they, they use this trick with this plugin. But how many times have you gone and done that? You, you've got the plugin, you followed their thing, and then you do it on your own stuff and it doesn't work the same. It's because it's not about the tips and tricks. Those tips and tricks might be useful, but without a core foundation, without all this other stuff, which I'm going to talk about in a second, all the tips and tricks in the world will get you absolutely nowhere. And it's not easy. And it's not about the next plugin you have to buy that's going to change everything for you. And it's not about the next tip and trick that you learn that it's going to get you there. That is a distracting voice. It's not true. And so we have these two really strong distracting voices that we have to cut through. And we actually have to get down to doing this thing the right way. We want to say you can, but we also want to say it takes work. The reason why you can is because you can lean into technology and do way more than those old guys in their 
million dollar studios want to let you believe Phineas and, and Billy Eilish showed that if you lean into technology, modern technology, there's so much farther you can go than you think you can, including your room, including your ears and including the gear that you have. It's not about hardware. In fact, the digital stuff that's coming out now competes with hardware. If, uh, if you want to know a little behind the scenes, I've sold all my hardware. Because I can do more with digital. It's not that I don't like hardware. I love it. I love the, you know, I have synths from the 80s back here. I love the viscerality of turning knobs and all that kind of stuff. But the digital stuff that's coming out is incredible. It's not just, it's not just uh, very powerful. It's very analog. <laughs> digital stuff that sounds very analog. The algorithms are getting incredible and the computing power is getting incredible. You can without the hardware. It's not about the plugins. We've done fix the mixes where we use stock plugins the whole time and everyone was blown away. Times have changed. It's all about mindset and it's all about understanding. It's about overcoming imposter syndrome. It's overcoming all these ceilings that people put in front of you and understanding what we have right now is an opportunity for music to have a renaissance that we have so many more people that can be creating right now. And we can do it at a very, very high level, but it takes work. If you just get out there and you're just using YouTube, you're just doing the quick fixes, the easy tips and tricks, what will happen is you will hit this intermediate plateau, right? It's, it's all about skill it, and it's about work ethic. It's not gonna be something where you get on YouTube and suddenly you have all the answers. What, what industry or what profession that we would ever learn works like that? Nothing. And uh, we've been lied to to think that it's about the plugin or about uh, the next tip or trick. It is going to be old fashioned, hard nosed work ethic, just like they used to do back in when you were interns at studios. All those studios are dying out now. Now we have to do this on our own, but there hasn't been a great place for that. And even the education programs that are out there you go there and you spend $100,000 at some program and they teach you to run an SSL console board and you then you realize that there's like five places in the country doing that and you're never going to work there and everything you do is in your room. And if you don't know how to do that, it doesn't matter and you spend $100,000 to learn an SSL console board. That's insanity. Times are changing and we have to change the way we educate. We have to cut through the YouTube noise. There are powerful tips out there. There, are, there is great information, but without foundation and, and stuff that I'm going to talk about in a second, what really matters, if your room's not dialed in, for example, if your ears aren't even fully trained, if you don't have a deep understanding of all that, that's going on with, uh, with the tools that you're using, the YouTube noise will just distract you. It's not going to give you any answers that are holistic over a long period of time. We're taking timeless knowledge, the stuff that the records, uh, uh, sorry, the recording studios of old knew and understood about music. They, they were, I mean, those guys back in the day, we talk about this all the time in the program. Those guys were just geniuses. And what, what you used to do to learn is you used to, maybe if you were lucky, get an internship at one of those studios and you'd get to know the process and this dance that they do and all the faders and they're cutting the tape and they're doing all this stuff. They knew more about music in their pinky finger that 99% of people knew, but all of that has died out. And so what we have to do is find the people like Warren, like all these other people who, who know about that stuff, but we're changing it and adapting it for the modern engineer, the home studio, the, the, the modern DAWs, the digital age. And that's what's going to be really powerful for you. It is important to have that knowledge. It just needs to be adapted. And then that same work ethic that these people who are doing internships at the studios still has to imply. You have to work so, so hard to develop your mind, your instincts, your understanding, your ears, your room, so that everything can actually become instinctual for you, like I was talking about before, where the creativity that exists within you can be unlocked and you can go forth and create the music that you've always wanted to be creating. There's, this isn't rocket science. I'm, there's no gimmick here. This is how everyone who's doing it is doing it. They're working their asses off. And uh, anyone that tells you differences is, is lying to you. 
So what is the reverse engineer for us? Well, it's everything we learned in the last 10 years, all poured into the highest level, most comprehensive program on the planet. We listened to our students for the last 10 years. We listened to these mastering engineers that we were teaching. We innovated a brand new way of teaching all of this. It doesn't exist anywhere. And it focuses on the thing that people are missing most, which is this technical side. It's the stuff that's not as fun. It's not the stuff that people are going to talk about on YouTube channels. It is that foundation that I'm talking about, the stuff that needs to exist before any of the YouTube stuff can be meaningful for you. That's what we learned in the last 10 years. We've seen people succeed and fail. And what really moved the needle when people really were willing to go down and deep dive into the technical to master that stuff and have it become uh, uh, instinctual for them. Everything we've learned in the last 10 years has been poured into this beautiful program. What is it more specifically? We start with mastering. We teach it in reverse. It's called the reverse engineer for a reason. We've, we've mentioned this already. We start with mastering. We, we get your room dialed in. We start you on intensive ear training. We give you an objective mindset and that end in mind perspective. We teach you the tools in a way that 99% of the people in the world will never understand them. You'll hear audio and you'll hear music in a way that almost no one knows how to. And with that, we'll expand into to mixing, which is mastering with 90 tracks instead of one. So it's a nice progression there. And then once again, once that all becomes instinctual to you, then we teach you production. And what we get to focus on in the production phase, because you already have all the tools and the instincts, is pure emotion and how to really make your music speak to people and stand out to people, to inspire them, and to give you a voice to express the things that are important to you, to other people, to your audience. It's a beautiful process. Our students love it. It's not like anything that exists out there at all. So let's break down what it looks like. It's a two-year program, full stack education program because we're doing mixing, mastering, production, all of it. Modern in-depth training curriculum. So there's hundreds and hundreds of videos for you to go through, lessons, uh, lectures, all that stuff. It's go at your own pace. So you come in, you can work it around your schedule. You can work it around your family life, your job. You're watching this stuff. Of course, that's not enough. In addition to that, you have the opportunity for daily live one-on-one -on -one mentorship you can hop on and sometimes two times a day <laughs> yeah where you can hop on and have one-on-one -on -one time it's my screen and your screen you open up your DAW. we're looking at what you're doing you have questions about what's going on within the training curriculum real answers from real pros i'm a mentor jake's a mentor warren hewart is a mentor you're going to work with him several times a month where you can hop on and have one-on-one -on -one time with Warren freaking Hewart, other, <laughs> it's incredible. And he's come on to, he's come on to do this because he really believes in what we're doing. Uh, Devon Terrell from help, help me Devon. He's one of our mentors. We have uh, other mentors in our elective programs who are multi Grammy winning uh, uh, mix and mastering engineers. We also bring in residents every other month who are pros in the industry, who you get to meet with. Uh, it's incredible. The mentorship level is huge. The training curriculum will actually take you a long ways, but it's really important to have that one-on-one -on -one time, that mentorship. It means everything when it comes to your progression. If you've never had mentorship before, mentorship in every facet of life is very, very important. And again, a huge community of high-level musicians. You have a community here in school for the Fix the Mix people. We have a community for the reverse engineer these are the best of the best. These are the people who are putting their money where their mouth is, who are really diving deep. I love our community more than I can even express to you. The people who are in there, how much they help each other, how much they're networking with each other. It's unbelievable. It, it's incredible uh, what we've been able to build with that. And it's because of the students we have and the character that they possess as people. Again, you don't have to be an island. You can get answers. Maybe you don't even want to wait for a mentorship call. In fact, I think the collective consciousness of the community is probably a lot more knowledgeable about everything than the mentorship alone. And both are very, very important. 
you can't go wrong with this. It's two years of this. If you apply yourself, if you work hard, we've given you every resource you could possibly need to get to where you want to go with your career or your music. You also get some business training, training if that's what you want to do. If you want to get some clients in mixing and mastering production, we help you with that. And then we also have electives, which I'm very excited about. If you want to get into sync, if you're an artist, if you want to get into mix and mastering engineer, uh, be a mix and mastering engineer, if you want to be a producer, we can have you work with uh, the best of the best people from, for example, like in our sync elective, bringing in people who are a &Rs from publishing companies that you can talk to and pitch and uh, and have them give you feedback directly and have opportunities to get signed to publishing deals. We're bringing you people from the outside, the connections that are very hard to make if you're living out somewhere and you don't have necessarily have the connections to these music supervisors, other people, we bring them into you. We pay them to come work with you because we realize the last thing in addition to curriculum and mentorship and community, is connections. And if you don't have those connections, it's really hard sometimes to move forward. We bring those to you. You have every opportunity again to be successful. There's nothing like this that exists anywhere. And it takes all three, again, one-on-one -on -one mentorship, the training platform, and the active community. It's the three-headed snake that really gives you an opportunity to move forward. Two-year university level mentorship program. And I say that with a grain of salt because most university level programs or most universities are teaching stuff that again, applied 10 years ago. If you wanna go run an SSL console board and spend hundred thousand dollars, please go do that. Uh, if you want to be a modern producer, this is the place. It's not magic. There's no snake oil. It's hard work. Our students work harder than anybody. I'm so proud of them. They're busting their butts to try to be the best. They're working really hard. They're engaging. They're getting on the mentor calls. They're, they're talking to each other in the community. And that's what makes it magical. We have found a recipe here to help people overcome that intermediate plateau. And so if you're the kind of person who's been looking for something like this, if you're the kind of person who's been feeling stuck, if you're the kind of person that as, I, as I've been talking or as I've been watching this for the last three days has had that little voice in your head like, I'm inspired by this. I think I could do this. I want to express myself more. If you have that little voice saying, it's time to maybe invest in myself finally, to get mentorship, to finally learn to do this on a professional level, that's who I'm talking to right now. So I want to give you an opportunity. <clears throat> and just a quick breakdown, by the way. Full Sail University just upped their music production course price to ninety two thousand dollars. Yeah, dude. Berkeley sixty grand, SA Institute is thirty six grand. The reason I uh, talk about these is because they're very expensive. But we also have students in the, who have gone to every one of those programs. I have a little special folder on my phone for messages students send me who have been in these programs who say something like. I wish I'd have found you first. I've learned more here in six months than I learned in four years there. That's the stuff that I get up in the morning for. Yeah, dude. <laughs> because that those prices are predatory. And the education system is changing. A lot of people are doing more specialized training now. Look at the tech world. It's more specialized. They're not going to a four-year degree generally to do that. They're doing a boot camp where you can focus just on that. You don't have to take all the other electives. You can become what you want to become. We're the first people that are doing that for the music industry. And check this out. Not 92000 or 60000 or 36000 Our two-year full-stack pro program, all-inclusive, 6800 bucks. Hey, can I add something here? More than welcome. Okay, so everybody who's on my email list, on our email list, knows that I used to work on Wall Street for three years coming out of college. And the reason I left was because I wanted to be a musician and I was an idealist and I left a massive paycheck because I thought I was going to make money in music. But I believe that there is a way to build something that wasn't built on screwing everybody else, right? That was sort of the Wall Street model. Their motto was always... Uh, it's not about winning. It's about screwing the other guy. That's what they used to say. And I just never bought into that. I was always like, I think we can probably make more money if we actually work with people and if we actually help people. 
And so when I came into this company and we started building mastering.com and we started launching TRE and we started building our community and everybody started helping each other. And you can see it on our team here. We all like each other. We all help each other. Rob and Caleb were here in Nashville last week and we were all hanging out as friends and we're all succeeding because we're all moving in the same direction. If you come in on our team meetings, it's the same exact vibe. We all work so hard but we all enjoy what we're doing and we love what we're doing. And what we're trying to do is to bring back that sort of golden age of education where you used to be able to pay to put yourself through school. You used to be able to have a normal job and be able to pay your tuition bills without being locked up for 10 years in, in school debt. And I know that this is a different scenario once you move outside the United States. I, I know this is a little bit more of a US-based issue, but it's gotten to the point where you can't have a regular job and get a decent education. And then the people who do try and do that, the people who mortgage their entire future to go to SAE or Berkeley or Full Sail, end up working at Guitar Center trying to pay it all back because there's not the opportunity that they thought there was going to be. So um, the reason we do these three-day challenges is to show you that we are sincere in what we're doing. And you can walk away, you can join the program, you can not join the program, we'll be stoked either way. The main takeaway is hopefully that you believe that what we're doing here is actually trying to change education, to try and give people the opportunity to chase their creative passions, to get the music that they have inside their head out, to put some good music back out into the world. And that if we all work together to do that, we can do a much better job than just trying to view people like pinatas that we can whack for money. So I know this isn't cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but at least you can have a normal life and you can pay it off and you can chase the things you love. And whatever happens from that point, we can't guarantee it. I'm certainly not touring the world as a musician, but I finally got the music that I wanted made. And that was my goal. So that's where we are. That's full transparency. That's everything on the table. That's who we are as people. And uh, if you resonate with it and you want to be a part of it, then you can book a consultation with our team. Um, I'll post the link here in the chat. Uh, they're a bunch of very sweet human beings as well. So you love talking to them. Yeah. And, our, uh, our consultants are, are really, really nice. Yeah. It, but it, it's up to you. You'll get as much out of this as you're, as you're willing to put into it. If you're willing to work hard, I know this works. I have lots of students who've gone on to do exactly what they want to do. And uh, it really just uh, depends on you, you showing up. We have the track record, we have the pedigree, but you have to come to the table and, and, and that passion that's been driving you to show up to these three day events. That's why we don't talk about this on day one. We don't want the people who jump off on day one and get distracted. We want the people who are still here on day three those are the people who are probably the most passionate and the ones we want to work with anyway. And I'll break this down and make it really easy for you. Uh, the next steps of the admission process, we don't just um, uh, have anyone come to the program. We want to make sure it's a good fit. Uh, it's not a sales thing. We're not selling you. We're, we're consulting with you because we need to decide if it's mutually a good fit. Um, we need to make sure that you're ready. We need to make sure that we're the right thing that you need. And that only can happen through a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So you got to book a consultation. That's the first thing to do. Decide if it's mutually a good fit. You can figure out a payment plan if need to. We want to make sure that anyone uh, kind of across the board for the most part can can afford this if we, you know, if we can help uh, you do that. We do a lot of that internally. So you don't have to like go out and get a loan or do any of that. We can work with you directly. And then you enroll and you start learning and you can build it around your schedule you uh, it's you know a lot of it's go at your own pace so that you can you know we know everyone has different situations so it's about you coming on starting to learn what i want to do right now is give you um we're going to take a five minute break just give you an opportunity we have a limited number of slots uh, that we can actually fill up because we have a limited number of consultants and their days are are free but they will fill up quickly but i want to give you all that are listening right now before the replays come out and everything the opportunity to get on first to go to mastering.com slash tre and just take uh it takes about three minutes to to fill out a little short form just a little bit about you and then book that call so going to take a quick five minute break and give you all an opportunity to do that rob and michael can answer questions in the meantime, but yeah, hop on there. Just give it, uh, have a conversation with us. You know, all the details, there's nothing, there's no, uh, hidden agenda here. It's just, if you're looking for real education, this is where we can do it. We're actually going to take a true break here guys yeah. to make sure everybody has a chance to book who needs to book. 
Yep. Right. So it will answer yeah. questions afterwards. I've been grabbing some of the questions. So we'll come back. If you have more, post them and we'll come back in five and we can do Q&A. Cool. Thanks, guys. Yay. I'm back. No one else is back. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm going to keep posting the link to book a consultation. Um, Very quickly, I thought that this was important, so I would just kind of share my quick story of how I got involved here. Um, so basically, like I said, I used to work in finance. Um, and the situation was I was a home producer and I was sending off my music to get mastered actually by the guy who originally founded our company and he would send back the mastered tracks and they sounded terrible. <laughs> and I never knew why, because he was supposed to be an amazing mastering engineer and I had no clue why my tracks sounded terrible. And I finally, I got on the phone with him and started talking to him and he's like, the reason the masters sound terrible is because your mixes sound terrible. And he's like, there's only so much I can do at the mastering phase to fix what's a terrible mix. And after a couple seconds of swallowing my ego and uh, accepting that what he was saying was true, I realized that, okay, I needed to learn mastering because if I didn't understand the destination, I'd never be able to actually understand how I'm supposed to get there. And I can't know when my mix is finished if I don't know what mastering is. And that was sort of the genesis of this whole reverse methodology concept of using mastering to push back on your mixing. And that transformed my music production. And so when I left finance and this position opened up with this company, I was like, I was personally transformed by this. This was the thing that got me to be able to leave my job and, and put my music out. And so the reason that we're all so passionate about this, the reason we talk about it, the way that we talk about it is because we've all come from this experience. Um, and so it's not like we sell this it's not like we believe in it because we sell it. We sell it because we believe in it. Like this, this company is because we believe in what we're doing, not the other way around. Um, 
So if you can't do it, that's totally cool. That's why we do these free challenges. We want ways to be able to educate people no matter what their income is, no matter what they can afford financially. If you can't do it right now, don't beat yourself up about it. Um, we're going to keep doing free challenges. We have a bunch of free YouTube content. If you can do it, if you could do a payment plan, if you could put some money down, do it. Because this is the best possible place for you to be if you want to learn this. Um, so again, we only have like a limited amount of slots. We're trying to open up more if we get filled up, but um go ahead and use that link to to schedule a consultation it'll take two seconds um i've been like copying the questions into a doc so i'll kind of i'll smash through some of these now and try and keep it quick i think jake's ready to go we're going to dive into vocal mixing soon we'll just get through these questions thanks for kind of bearing with us as we go through these, through these but i want to make sure that everyone kind of gets their questions answered so um i think i saw one question about beginners so yeah, Caleb, like Caleb said, this is definitely, we built this with intermediates in mind. Um, later on, we added uh, like door training. So like uh, a couple of months ago, we, we added a whole bunch of like door tutorials. So if you're a complete beginner, you're just gonna have a slightly different track where there's, like Caleb said, there's kind of like some maybe side training or like, okay, well, if you're a complete beginner, go through this first. So, so we have built in a way where it's like, cool, you can come in even if you're early. Um, and we go from like absolute zero, that's fine. Um, oh. Kind of follow it on the side of a job, absolutely. That's actually like the vast majority of people in here have a have a day job or doing the program part-time. Um, that's partially why it's two years as well. We wanna give you guys enough time to go through the training, get a ton of help on the mentorship calls. It was one year until very recently. Um, and we increased it to two years to make sure people get even more help and make sure they have enough time. They don't have to like rush through the program, uh, but yeah like someone else asked how much time will it take it's completely up to you like we have people who will smash through this really quickly either they are doing it full-time or they just stay up late every night <laughs> and the whole weekend is going through the program so it, it completely depends like some people are probably doing a few hours a week some people probably doing like you know eight hours a day like it, it depends but you've got two years to go through it um uh, Rob, real quick i think uh I think we booked up all the slots. So we just opened a bunch more for the rest of next week. <laughs> so if, awesome. if there was uh, not the time that you were looking for, you can, uh, I extended it for the rest of the next week too. So um, I don't think anybody had any issues, but if you did. Time, time zone differences, I just saw that. Yeah, so we have two, there's like Caleb said, there's a couple of days where we have two calls and we try and split them up. So there'll be like an earlier call, a later call. The earlier calls more for like Europe, later calls for like West Coast. Of course, everything's stored in replays. If you can't attend, I know that like Jake, Caleb, Dane, they will absolutely help anyway. Um, like we're just gonna do everything we can to support everyone. I saw one person asking like, uh, can't remember the exact question, but like, okay, well, we've got 750 people in the community. We've got a lot of people going through the program. How do the numbers stack up? Like, how are we able to facilitate one-on-one -on -one with everyone? And that's why like over time, we just added more and more Q and A calls. We'll go on for as long as we need to make sure that everyone's questions get addressed. As soon as they start getting to like two, like three hours long, we'll add more Q and A calls. And that's why we're now at the point where we've got two, uh, you know, I think more, more days of the week, there's two than one now, right, Jake? Dude, I didn't um, even remember we were doing like, I, I didn't realize we were doing them daily now, even. Yeah, yeah, it's every, exactly. So there's so to be able to say that it's amazing. <laughs> and there's, I mean, there's five, five different coaches just in TRE, Warren, Devon, Jake, Caleb, Dane. And then we have the electives. And that's where we've got like, Kevin McCloskey, who's worked with like the baby and future and and I do some of the coaching calls in the elective. So yeah, there's a whole host of mentorships, but just know that like, we're not gonna, if, if it ever kind of becomes an issue where it's like, you're not getting your questions answered, Jake, Dane, Caleb, they'll shoot you a video or something. Like you'll still get your question answered. If you can't attend a Q and A call, you just need to message them in school and we'll add more, like it's not a problem. Um, so uh how long do one to one mental meetings last per day so i just kind of address that i think right now since we increase the frequency maybe they're a bit shorter jake because again once we get through everyone's questions that's it um so they tend to be like an hour or two but, um, it's, not, but it's not like it's not like this where you're just on and you're typing in no. chat it's it's one-on-one -on -one time where you can hop on no one else is talking it's me and you and you can have all the time you need share uh, your screen yeah open it's, up your door we want to help with whatever you need. Usually questions don't take, you know, forever to answer per person, but I've had ones that go longer and I'm like, Hey, let's, 
let's do a whole session on this. So like, we'll, we'll keep it live and we'll go half an hour or something like that. Like, and you have to remember too, that like, it's, that's not the only pillar that this program is built upon, right? There's training that you're going to take. That's going to answer a lot of your questions before yeah. you even, get to the point. you know what I mean? And and we have a chat bot. So for like just the quick questions, 24 seven, 365 days a year, you can ask and it's going to show you, you can, you can even ask like, Hey, can you recap this specific lesson for me? You can say what lessons in the program talk about this topic. You can ask just questions like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to know like how to tweak the attack time on my compressor. And it's going to give you an answer. So that also, I think people are finding really helpful. Um, Will there be payment plans? Yeah, so this is where it's like just tailored to you. Um, we'll work with you. That's partially why we do these like consultations is to work with you to figure out like a, a way to make it uh, financially feasible. So basically just book a call. Um, any any other question, by the way, that you have, you can just book a call and speak to speak to one of the um, advisors. Yeah, um, I, I run the consultation team too. So those guys are ship shape. They know what they're doing. So they'll answer any questions that you have. So if you if we don't answer your question here, bring, just book a consultation. We'll talk to you about yeah, it. Get, get ready to dive into what you've been doing. Get ready to dive in what's been holding you back because they want to talk to you about what's actually going on. They're not just going to like, do you want to sign up? It's it's like, oh yeah, they're going to stay in. Let's, let's figure it out if this is a good fit. And I've seen like a bunch of people inside of, inside of Reverse Engineer who are here today. If you're inside of that program, one in the chat, Amazing. I'm sure Nick's, I, I'm not looking at the chat, but I'm sure Nick's been, Nick was on an FTM, what, five months ago or so? Now he's just one of our most vocal, just very helpful, incredible students that uh, just is the life of the community. So uh, he's not a bot. We're not paying him to post these things. He just actually loves it. And all the students who are saying stuff, they just really love this because we, we have a cool thing going on. It's a big family and it's a cool place to learn. Um, okay, I'm gonna try and like just power through this because I know you guys yeah, want to get sorry. into the vocal mixing stuff vocal as well. Mixing. Um, so someone said, "Can I do a consultation in September?" If any of those times don't work, um, Michael, any suggestion on that? What's the best way to get like a? Uh, you shoot me a message in school, Michael Gilbride, uh, in the school platform. If you guys need to book out any further than the calendar is allowing you to, and then I'll just manually hand them off to our consultation team. Cool. School. Yeah. So what's the school website? Maybe when we have a break or, later on, we can show you around. But but mm -hmm. Michael's referring to the Fix the Mix school group. But TRE, the reverse engineer, is hosted in its own private school group. So you've already experienced the platform. And there's the community, the classroom, the events calendar. So so it's the same platform. So you kind of know how that works. Um, is it too late if 58-year-old? Definitely not. That's actually probably our most common def demographic. Um, is that kind of 50-60? It's like pretty even split, but like that is that is actually our most uh, popular. Like, yeah, we get, we get a lot of guys that are like, I've always wanted to do this. I'm kind of just re maybe retiring or getting close to it. I want to finally start living my dream of making the music I always wanted to do. I love those guys. It's a lot of fun. We didn't even mention Lucy. So when you join, you get a we call her a student success specialist. So you have a one on one with her, and she'll be checking in with you one on one. She's kind of like a concierge where she'll point you in the right direction. So you have someone you can have one on one time whenever, whenever you want. And she'll then kind of help you leverage the program properly, hold you accountable. She's kind of like a coach. So she's not necessarily going to be the one helping you with audio production. But if you're struggling with a mindset issue, Caleb, Jake are absolutely going to help you with that too. But you also have Lucy. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, in the mentorship calls, is there space to make an assessment of songs in progress of students? That's actually a huge focus. Two of the calls a week are dedicated just to music feedback um, with Warren and Devon. But then also in the normal mentorship sessions, a lot of it is just pulling up people's tracks and reviewing them. Um, is it possible to split a TRE into modules? Um, so, and just quickly a comment on that. Getting mixed critique, getting a mixed critique from Warren, that's like pretty baller. We were like happy <laughs> about that when Warren came in and it's like, okay, this does pretty cool. <laughs> um so i'm stoked about that so yeah if you want warren to like listen to your mixes and then have a conversation with him about it not just him you know make some comments briefly it's like get on a zoom call with warren he listens to your music your mixes and gives you feedback and then you can ask questions have a conversation that's that's what we're talking about here um other classes online all online all virtual 
Um, any availability, availability starts in next week. You can start whenever. It's not a cohort base. Uh, we just plug you in when you're ready to go. So yeah, just book a call and we can kind of figure out like a lot of people just start straight away. Some people like to defer it, but uh, if you book a call, we can talk about that. Can you enroll at a time or does it have to start a specific date? Cool, just address that. You can enroll at any time. Is there a shorter course that you offer, like to teach just the basics or even work with clients to help with projects they're working on? Um, so we do have a slightly shorter program called the Reverse Engineer Foundations. Again, if like just book a call and we'll figure out what the right fit is, but that covers just mastering. So it's like a reduced version of the program. So you know, for some people it's because uh, financially they'd rather do something that's uh, like a little bit more affordable or they just want to do mastering. It's predominantly the, the former and then later on they'll upgrade to TRE because you can use your payment towards foundations for TRE. So again, just book a call. We don't really talk about that here because it kind of, we don't want to make it too complicated. But if you get on a call with an advisor, that's when they can go through it, explain, go through the options, recommend the best path forwards. Um, how long do the mental, okay, we've done that. On the business end, do you mixing contract guidelines, getting clients part of it? Yep, that's part of it as well. We've got a whole week. I think it's a, a, a week in each phase. So phase one's mastering, phase two's mixing, phase three's production. There's a whole week in each of those phases that is dedicated to going out and getting clients. And that's taught by Daniel Grimmett who uh, owns a company called Dark Label Music. It normally costs thousands of dollars to work with him one-on-one -on -one, get consulting, but he's part of the program as well. And uh, and Caleb and Jake will absolutely help with that on Q&A calls as well. So that is part of it. And the cool thing is like you can finish the mastering section. If you want, you could go out and start offering mastering as a service. So in nine weeks, uh, that's kind of nine weeks of, of training. You can then go out and start offering mastering as a service if you want to. Most people get to the end first, but if you're like, man, I just want to go out, just focus on mastering, get some clients, get some money coming in, we can do that in nine weeks, basically. Yep. And then if you're um, really serious about it, those electives are a way for you to go farther and get co the connections that we were talked about, work work on it on a much deeper level, and then be interfacing with the best of the best in the in the whole world on this stuff and have an opportunity to speak with them. So go as far cool. as you want. <clears throat> I think I think I got all of that. I probably missed some. But again, any other questions, just book a call. And you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody on our team. Ask as many questions as you like. They they'll ask you questions as well. Figure out like is you know, is this the right thing for you? Um, what's the ideal next step? If it's not the right thing right now, what's kind of a roadmap to to kind of like prepare for doing this in the future? Um, yeah. It's just yeah, a conversation. We teach, we teach vinyl mastering. Shut it La Last thing I'm saying before and then I'm I'm done for the day uh i was just gonna say we booked a few dozen calls uh almost instantly and i was just gonna say uh thank you to everybody we pour so much hard work day in and day out into this and the mentors put so much effort in that uh for you guys to support us and to at least consider us as an option is actually it's actually emotionally touching and if i wasn't a robot i'd get a little emotional but the fact that you guys have been so kind that you allow us to talk about our program a little bit and that you support us and that you consider us it's it's really overwhelming and um thank you so much and the the, the guys are going to crush it today you guys are in for a, a killer session now so thanks for letting us talk to you a little bit about what we do and uh yeah we won't yes. let you down we'll we'll uh we'll no uh, we feel that yeah we won't let you down and if you like the last few days imagine what we could do in two years i mean it's just uh it's like a whole it's like a whole different level so for yeah. those of you who are ready, let's rock and roll. Look forward to working with a bunch of you. But enough of this. Enough of this stuff. Let's get to the fun stuff. Let's get to let's get to mixing. Give me one number, Jake. I feel dialed in. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Give me a number. Not when you're ready for it. Mm. You're still waiting. No, I'm just patiently. 328,692. I think I was second there. <laughs> I do think I was second. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Second is... Uh, no, first. I was first. Second is first loser, Michael. Well, good thing I was first loser. First no, you weren't. You weren't winner. first. I was. Well, you were first. Okay, what a way to go out. Thanks, everybody. Bye. You had the, ham the hammer pulled back. All right. <laughs> Get out of here. Bye. <laughs> All right. Let's jump in, guys. Bye. Looks like you want to get started. <laughs> Who am I to stand in the way?
going deep on this uh on vocals today guys make sure all your uh chat questions uh, we mentioned this but make sure you're set to everyone instead of hosts and panelists Awesome. Let's jump in. We're going to start with just a little listen through, see where we're at now. Audio test. Can you guys hear that? Hearing that one in the chat? Yeah. Sounds good. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. Show it on my face So desperate for your love So please Tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed Another lonely night You see I don't mind You can tell me anything To make me satisfied What a beautiful voice this dude has. Yeah, someone posted in the, ch sorry, someone posted in the chat his, uh, a video from when he was on The Voice this season. Yeah, we haven't done anything the vocal yet, by the way. Some people were like, I think it's a little dry. I agree. <laughs> we <haven't done> <laughs> same, same, I'd agree with that. We haven't done anything to it yet at all. <laughs> it is the raw vocal pretty damn good sounds pretty good already yeah the recording was solid you know and we've done a few macro moves here you know in terms of um gain automation clip gain automation right we turned sure. up some of these clips turned down some of these other clips but today we are going in on a whole nother level right and uh so you guys get ready for some deep deep work today um Let's go. Let's move. 
You know, I, I'll explain just a couple of the notes that I was taking here. Uh, number one, just kind of in the fixed category, obvious sibilance, right? Even some of the breaths, um, probably a little bit too forward for me. Vocal, just in in general, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for enhancement with the tail ends of some of these words. You know, some of these, some characters getting lost and buried in the arrangement, right? And I think we can bring that out um, and kind of use gain automation as a paintbrush for that. And then leveling. Just overall, vocal could use a little bit more leveling. You know, some just points where it's sticking out of the mix a little bit more than others. Um, and once we get all of that done, we'll, and then we start to enhance things with these wet effects, we'll kind of sit this mix, uh, sit this vocal into the mix a little bit better, right? So obviously it's dry. Obviously there are, you know, there's some things that we have to bring to baseline here before we get to like really sit in a comfortable spot. Right. So we'll kind of go through that stuff. And then some other things I was hearing, you know, really that choir at that very end, like it just needs to be dialed in the whole end of the track. When it comes in, it's got to be the biggest. It's a climax, right? It's the biggest part of the song. So we need to clean up the choir. We need to clean up any build up and fix that. And then maybe there's some um, enhancement techniques that we can use to really just kind of like blow this thing up and make it just huge and massive, right? But first we're getting, we're bringing out the microscope and getting super detailed with these vocals. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's jump right in. You guys following me so far? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the process. Yeah. Watch cool. the stuff. We've already done, so we've already done one level of gain and automation or yeah. I mean, we went through and did big picture, big swath macro kind of, yeah yeah you know it's all macro so here's level two yeah we're getting deep we're getting deep now uh somebody asked a, a question before all the ones like buried it in the chat can you repost that real quick not the ones but the question Mike used for vocals. What did Dan use on that? Oh, we used the Soyuz. It's one. It's my mic, the uh, Soyuz 017 tube mic. We did that live on the Fix the Vocal Challenge or whatever oh, we called it. Sponsored by Soyuz. Not because they sent me the mic. I already had it because it's my favorite mic. Um, all the gain automation questions are about to be answered. So we're going to set those aside for a sec. Ah, that's that's the one, Colton. That's the one I, I wanted to answer. The song. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I'm losing it. <laughs> I'm going to take a snapshot. <laughs> okay. The song is awesome. How do you motivate yourself to work on songs that sound terrible and are not fun to work on? Yeah, you don't. Don't. <laughs> Oh, there's such a, there's a, a huge part in the program where it's a whole mindset shift about the clients, what we work with. If you're just sitting there working with the guy down the street that doesn't pay you very much, who wants a deal for everything, his stuff's not very good. Uh, it is a waste of your time. You're much better off marketing yourself. We have to go into all of that because that's a common thing. We have to change the standard for ourselves of what we're worthy of working on. Exactly. Exactly. That's on you. It's on you as a business owner. It's kind of a business, more of a business question. It's tempting to take the money. Uh, yeah. It's tempting to take the money, but it's not worth your time. It's better to invest in your finding the people that will actually appreciate what you do more. And defining what, who it is you want to work with up front so that you can easily screen people and say, oh, this doesn't meet my criteria. This isn't what's going to make me happy or, or this is what's going to pull my focus or distract me from what's ultimately in the long term going to be good for my business right yeah no we didn't record this on console we recorded this in dane's room in his basement with a, just a uad interface and a great mic 
Someone says, I record anyone paying my bills. That's one way to do it. I met EJ. He's actually local here. So he happened to be on The Voice, but he's someone I've worked with for many years. How cheap can you go on a mic? You know, I, I'm going to dig in here. I'm just going to answer this one, and then we'll dig in. Um, yeah, I've had phenomenal vocal tracks recorded on like a hundred dollar mic and i've had crap vocal tracks recorded on uh five figure mics doesn't really you know this is just more about what caleb is talking about it's not really about the gear you know the gear does the gear help like top shelf gear help or like totally crummy gear like <laughs> Uh, you know, it's going to make a difference, but what moves the needle the most is the skill, right? Is the craft. If you are going to spend money, I would say in this industry, obviously education first, uh, the two things I'd spend money on are, are studio monitors and a microphone. If you're recording. Yeah. If you're recording. Do treatment. Just get that room dialed in. All right. Let's dig in here. Sorry. I should say... Sorry, I should say room first, actually. Yeah. Uh. No one ever saw you cry. I'm going to take care of um, a lot of the sibilance here manually. No one ever saw you cry. Not all sibilance is created equal. No one ever saw you cry. Saw you cry. No one ever saw you cry. No one ever saw you cry. Y'all hear that? Saw you high behind you. Saw you high behind your wall. Saw you high behind your wall. Well, too much. Saw you high behind your walls. Sorry if I'm quiet here. Um, I'm just cooking. So here I'm using a game plugin to write in some automation, some volume automation, gain automation technically. So he's he's right, affecting next. things on a region level. You saw him chop that and move the end of that up in general. Now he's going to take the tail of this and bring the tail up so it's more intimate. So you hide behind your walls. So you hide behind your walls. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Sweet spot right there. You build so high so you won't S's. You build so high so you won't Sibilant City. Back in Sibilant City. Guess I'll use this new tool. You build so high, so you. You build so high, so you. You know, it's a delicate dance here, guys. You build so high, so. You know, you bring it down too much, and it'll start to sound funky. You build so high, so you build so high, so you won't. So high, so you won't. A sweet spot That's there. why you kind of have to do this because if you just put a de-esser on it, it's going to overreact to some and underreact to others, even if you set the parameters really well. This is a new tool in Logic. You build so high, so you won't fall. You build so high, so you won't fall. Uh, I have a, you know, I have a, I have a choice to make here, right? So if you listen to this S, it's it, the way it was performed. It's actually more like an SH sound. Shh. You 
Feels so high, so high, right? S H. You feel so high, so you won't. That's just the way that it was captured, right? So I can either choose to leave it here with kind of like a slight imperfection like that, um, or I can grab an S from somewhere else to just kind of like plug into that spot, right? You feel so high, so you won't fall. So, for example, like if I wanted to get like really detailed here and I'm not saying like this is right or wrong you know there is no right or wrong here it's kind of up to you on how you want to approach things let's see if we can make that work you build so high so you I don't I don't think it's gonna quite work with that S because of the way it was performed. You know, so I actually might just kind of let it be what it is. Or you can do some digging for another S. You build so high so you won't. You build so high so you. You build so high so you. You know, it's just going to take some finagling if you wanted to do that. But, you know, I would say the original capture is within an acceptable level, honestly. You build so high so you won't fall. All right. You build so high so you won't fall. Right there. This this part right here is one of my favorite parts of the whole song. He's a, there's a little lift at the end of this phrase. Oh. Oh. Hear that? Hear that? <laughs> oh. 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 Love it. Um, now, some of you might be hearing uh, like low cycles in there. Uh, we're going to handle that. Don't worry. We'll do it later. So we're focusing on this right now. You oh. saw tears in all my pain. Yeah, these sibilants are wild. Bring up total volume of that section. You saw tears in all my pain. And we've got a tail end of this. Here again, like such a beautiful moment to bring it up, you know? Isn't all my pain? pain? Like a little bit of the wavery kind of nature of the voice. Isn't all my pain? Yeah, it's gorgeous. Love it. Isn't all my pain? Wait. You saw tears in all my pain. Yeah, let's hit this. Same thing here. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to go like this and I'm going to go like this. Bring that breath down just a touch. I will show it on my face. So and I might just bring that up just a little bit more. On my 
face. So does uh, how are you switching between tools? I've set up custom shortcut keys to switch between all my tool, my editing tools. So desperate for your love. So desperate for your. So desperate for your love. Oh. So desperate for your love. So desperate for your love. And here at the end, let's bring that up again. Just character moment. So desperate for your love. Ugh. That's his attitude, you know? That's his artistry. That's his performance coming out. So desperate for your love. Beautiful. Beautiful. Bring this over here. So desperate for your love. Nice. That's our verse. And gonna crossfade all of that. Listen. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. You saw tears in all my pain. I will show it on my face So desperate for your love No one ever saw you cry Do an A-B Listen to the difference here No one ever saw you cry Saw you hide behind your walls You build so high so you won't fall You saw tears in all my pain I will show it on my face So desperate for your love See how that sounds a bit more karaoke-ish Everything is dipping in and coming forward to the track And the S's are too loud And it, it sounds a little bit more karaoke compared to this no one ever saw you cry saw you hide behind your walls you build so high so you won't fall you saw tears in all my pain i will show it on my face so desperate for your love Me likey. Yeah, I'm just going to go in here. I, I agree. I'm just going to go in here and take care of some of those like more prominent breaths, those breaths that are kind of like a little bit more forward. We're going to take those back a little bit. No one ever saw you cry. So you have this one. Right. A little bit too much. So you have you cry. So you hide behind your wall. And actually gonna take uh, this S down a little bit more. I saw you hide behind your walls. You build so and here. Your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. Sweet spot to be had. Behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall You saw tears in all my pain How <gasps> In all my pain How will show it on my face So desperate for your love So please Cool Me likey
I like that one. That's the new logic tool, huh? With the uh, gain. Yeah. I haven't used it much yet. That's it. That's it. Helpful. You know, that coupled with the marquee tool. No one ever saw you cry. Saw you hide behind your wall. Just take the, like, the front end of that down. No one ever saw you cry. Saw you hide behind your walls You build so high so you won't fall You saw tears in all my pain I will show it on my face So desperate for your love I will show it on my face uh, Just a little bit here I will show it on my face So desperate for your love pain I will show it on my face So desperate for your love Cool. That's a verse. <clears throat> Puts us in a good spot to do any subsequent processing. You know? Um, already sounds like already sounds gorgeous, you know, and we were doing a couple things here, right? Number one, we were fixing stuff, right? Leveling out the vocal, fixing some um, obvious and distracting issues with breaths, with sibilance. Uh, number two, we were enhancing some things, right? We were bringing up the tail ends of words and we were being very intentional and specific about what things we wanted to automate up, right? We we're making those decisions based on the music and based on the feel and based on the emotion. Every artist is going to do that different, right? Every engineer is going to do that a little bit differently too. Robots can't do that, right? Does that make sense? You guys with me? Uh, somebody asked, did you use a DS or at all? No, no DSing. Not at this point anyway. Might still even do like a subtle layer of that. But uh, no, this is all volume. This is all gain right now. This is all gain automation. And we spent a lot of time, you know, how long did that take on this verse? 10, 15 minutes? About, you know? So worth the time. Worth the time, yeah. Listen, DSers and compressors aren't going to do that for you the way that he just did it. That was intentional, artistic, yeah. emotional, subjective choices. In fact, if you're worried about AI taking over anytime soon, it's going to be a long time before they can go in with that kind of subjective, emotional technique. They're yeah, I guess we could take... train one to, to like do this the way Jake would do it and like <laughs> give them a bunch of like mixing like videos that <laughs> that I've done in the past. You know, people... I guess you like theoretically you could train it, but I think people... we're a long way off. People, people want humanness. Yeah. Yeah, fake Jake. Fake Jake can't even do it. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked about vocal rider. Yeah. So, dude, it's totally up to you. I prefer a manual, like a more manual approach. But if you want to use vocal rider for this kind of stuff, you can do that. I think Caleb uses vocal rider. Well, um, and we have in the past. But think about it like this: like, like don't let it do the choices for you but if you want to use it as another type of compressor that's fine yeah still make all these choices you, you could do all this and then do a little bit of vocal writer and then do a compressor warren does it that way so just about don't don't i think it's easy to get you know i don't know if it's laziness or a lack of attention to detail but it's easy to to not want to put the work in to do this, but this is where the magic is. You get control, you know, you get a lot of control here. And for vocal, you know, for other, you just got to weigh it out, right? You have to weigh out how, how important it is to you. For a vocal, to me, a vocal is very, very important. Yep. You know, and, and it deserves my undivided time and attention. 
For you know, those of you who are, are asking about gain and volume, all of this is gain stuff. So this is all pre-fader. The, the, uh, the volume fader is still free to be moved up and down in a mixing sense. All of this is pre-fader. It's all happening before the plugins, before everything else. Yep. We want to keep that free the fader, right? Someone had the t-shirt idea. Yep. And this goes, dude, guys, this goes for everything, you know, all the automated tools, right? Debreathing, de-essing, um, you know, leveling. You can you can use any of these tools in any ways that you want, right? This is just my preference here. Right. And and hopefully I'm just trying to unlock your brain to see some of the advantages or disadvantages of, of this method versus other methods. Right. Totally up to you. But that's the reality of the situation too, right? Not all breaths, uh, I mentioned earlier, not all S's are created equal. Not all breaths are created equal. Not right. all ends of phrases are created equal. Not, not all, all consonants, are... not all consonants are created equal. Right? The vocal is just so dynamic. There's so many variables there. So, you know, I like to get in there with the scalpel. That's all. That's why you don't have to do this on other tracks because most instruments, drums, anything like that, they're nowhere near or dynamic as the human voice is. It's the hardest thing to mix and and record. It is a wild beast, the human voice. It is. It is. Anyway. Cool. Yeah, maybe a guitar solo for sure. There are moments to do this on other tracks if it's like a really intimate, like like a, like a a really beautiful acoustic guitar solo where you want to accentuate a little bit of the string noise on a on a, a slide or something or uh, you can totally do it with something like that nope. let's keep going chorus so please tell me lies so i don't have to go so please Let's get in here. So please tell me lies. Ah. Uh. Lies. So, that's such a good note. My favorite part comes up in uh, verse two. We'll talk about it when it happens. I don't, do, I don't I don't usually go into this much detail with backing vocals but more like a general I'll do a general leveling a lot of times or you know uh, the uh, vocal line is a really great tool that will match the lead vocal if it's supposed to be like a unison vocal or a harmony that you want to have it match once you get the lead down then something like vocal line is gonna it's gonna match it pretty well and since it's not like the the full on lead it doesn't need as uh, as much attention to detail i do nowhere near that amount of this the amount of detail work on a on a backing vocal no no way Simply not. Mm -mm. it's not it's not useful by the time i get done with the lead vocal i'm done <laughs> yeah. i'm done with it <laughs> i put in the work i'm over it <laughs> tell me lies so I, I wanted to bring out that a little bit more, right? Now, this is interesting. The S is fine, but the O on the word so gets lost, gets buried. Let's bring it up. Why don't have to? Why don't, right? We're down a little bit. Sweet spot. Why don't have to go to bed? Compared to where it was before. Just down here. So I don't have to. Let's bring it up. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. There's a spot. 
Mm. DJ, good job. You sit I I Now let's just move that over here. I really just want this kind of like yummy stuff. This. Hey. You. Yeah. yeah, love it. So yeah. much, so much tension in that, you know. Hey. You see, I don't. You see. You see. A little bit smoother to listen to. You see, I don't mind. You see, I don't mind. That's, I think that's already there enough. I love the way he just falls into that line. It's a little late and he just kind of falls into it. It's really oh. Late. You see, I don't mind. Tell me anything. I'm gonna actually bring these up a little bit. I'm still not like 100% used to using the new gain tool here. I keep, do you see how my mouse keeps like quickly twitching over here to like turn up the setting? Yeah. On this side. Totally. <laughs> and then I remember, then I remember there's a new gain tool and I could just hit a hockey. Yeah. They're getting used to it. What's the hotkey? What's that? What's the hotkey for it? Uh, I do custom ones. Oh. My hotkey is just shift G. Like anytime I want to change a tool, it's shift and then some kind of key. For the gain tool for me, it's shift G. You can tell me. A little too much. You can tell me anything. What? Maybe I'm wrong on that. You can tell me anything to me. You can tell me anything to make me say. And this whole section here can use a bump. Tell me anything to make me satisfied. Nice. A little bit less. Tell me anything to make me satisfied. Hide. Right here? That no, nope, it was here. That is Anything to make me satisfied. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna let DSing take care of anything to make me satisfied. Just kidding. Anything to make me satisfied. Ah, right call. Yes, come on, give me that. Give me this tasty uh, tail end here. Where's the D on that? I pretty Is there a D in there? Nearly. Pretty 
I pretty lie. I pretty lie. There's no D. No D. Should we find a D? I think so. Pretty lie. It's going on. Uh... Pretty lie. Pretty lie. Pretty lie. Is it they're meant to be what what what's the lyric there? Is it meant to be a D? And make me satisfy pretty right. satisfied. Satisfy. Maybe it just is what it is, you know? Make me satisfy. I you see hike me satisfy pretty lie. Pretty liar, pretty liar. Yeah, it's just mega soft. I think I'm okay with that. I pretty liar, pretty. Listen to it in context. So please tell me lie. So please tell me. Works. So please. I think that works. I'm gonna leave it. Tackle some of these sibilants. So please. So please. So please tell me lies. So I don't have to go. But more. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. More. Anything to make me satisfied. Yes. Anything to make me satisfied. And a little bit more on that one. And then we're good. I'm even gonna do anything with that. Pretty liar, pretty liar, pretty liar. It's good as is, I'm not touching it. You don't have to because there's nothing else going on, so you hear the end of the phrases. Yeah. That's the point when there's a lot going on, you miss them. Pretty liar, pretty liar, pretty liar. I even, you know, I'm tempted to hit that just a touch. Just do something like this. Pretty liar, pretty liar. Let's tame it to the point where there isn't like that, like um, 200, 300 build up, you know, the proximity build up there. Mm -hmm. Pretty liar, pretty liar. And we're into verse two. Let's take a fiver. Oh, look, look who's here. Look who just showed up. Look who decided to show up. The man himself. Where is he? I see his name. 
He's on his mobile, so I'm not sure. Uh, oh, okay. All right. He's here in spirit. <laughs> okay. Warren can hear us, but I don't know if uh, I can ask him to unmute. As soon as I'm ready to take a break. <laughs> That's fine. We can take a break. Let's talk to Warren for a minute. Yeah, is it okay? All right. Just kind of want to take a little rest. Um, I'll be back. I'll stop screen share for a second. You guys can chat. A uh, funny uh, fun fact for y'all. Uh -huh. Oh, there's one. Hey, 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 Kinda. So, yeah. So, so on my phone, there's no. I've been here for a while, by the way, and I was here right at the beginning. Uh, when I was uh, Rob was talking, and I was messaging him saying, "Hey, I'm here. Let me in." Um, <laughs> but no, it, it, there's no unmute function until it says "host" has allowed you to unmute. So, can you do "host allow" to show video or something? So I can't see any way um, of turning oh, my video. Oh, there we go. Ask to start video. Try that. I just did it again. If that'll prompt okay, you. Okay, one more time. I don't see that. Ask to start video. I have to get permission from from His Highness Sir Rob. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I've uh, I try. I sent it. Oh. See you later. Yeah, I, I don't know. Hi, Warren. Oh. Hey. Oh, he's back. Maybe. <laughs> Hey. Oh, Can you see oh, me? There we go. He's got the oh. guitar. So, so pop out some Holdsworth. For I've, got the, I've got the guitar. Oh, wait there. Hold on. All the Holdsworth stuff. <laughs> uh, I can't hold the phone. It's, it's still a... Oh, he's so choppy. I'll give some context. Oh. Oh. <laughs> original sound for musicians turned on. <laughs> it's a great shot, though. Everybody great take screen caps. Yeah, screen cap that. Uh... You take screenshots. Yeah, well, new... new profile. E, I'm on that, and I've got one bar. So the download seems to be working. Where, where Warren's at in the UK, uh, they send internet over carrier pigeon. So each... Classic. Horse and carriage. Each bit is uh, injected. <laughs> something. Something there. <laughs> That's something. So, you can see, yes. We'll workshop it. phone is not very good here, so I keep it keeps dropping me. Yeah. Yeah, the video will uh, make it so we can't hear you, but at least we can hear you with the video off. Okay, I uh, have no idea how to turn my video off. That's oh, all right. Right. You're good. It's common. Oh, Jake, can you, you so you can hear me okay? Hear you mm. okay. It's not great. Uh, sorry, yeah. It's just I've got one bar of LTE, so not exactly uh, designed for the best quality here, unfortunately. No worries. You can you can uh, listen in and comment in the chat if uh, you see any opportunities for production stuff. That'd be cool. Yeah, listen in and comment in the chat, Warren. By the way, yeah, it just keeps disconnecting. Because fun fact: so many so many of you signed up for calls that it broke our page momentarily. <laughs> And, and by the way, if any of you had a problem with the page, uh, try again. We fixed it, but you literally broke our page. Oh, we got some guitar. Some nice background guitar. Oh, wow. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, it's uh, it, unfortunately, I'm, I'm in a non internet situation here. I'm in the trying to get some LTE with one bar at the moment. So. Yeah, but sounds... I've been listening in, and I love. If you can hear me, I love all the detail work on the vocals. To me, this is this is what makes or breaks it. If you can get a vocal to be compelling, then everything else falls into place. One hundred percent. Yeah, Jake smashing it. Um... Great stuff. So if yeah, if I disappear, I apologize with the with the uh, terrible internet situation, but. Uh, I'm able to listen and not very able to communicate, so I apologize for that. Yeah, feel free if you want to just uh, comment and chat or 
whatever else you want to Great. do. Great. Glad to have you, Warren. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I love it. I'm having a blast. It's a little bit better for a minute. You can mute me then and I'll just comment in the chat. Uh, don't distract. Sick Axe, well, what it is, it's a Yamaha Revstar. I absolutely love it. Oh, apparently we have electrical storms that are messing up our internet. And thank you all the Very compliments. Nice. I love it. It's the best thing about the studio basement. You don't even know what the weather is outside. <laughs> Just time. It's like being in Vegas. Uh, exactly. I've never been outside. <laughs> Oh, yeah. If anyone does want to have... Yeah, what is outside? What is outside? I think when's, when's your, ne your next Q&A inside the TRE is next Thursday, isn't it, Warren? That's the next... Next mentor. Student. Correct. Yeah, that'll be fun. So if anyone wants to hop on a call with Warren on Thursday, week today, you know what to do. Please, Please do my thing. Jake, you ready to get back to it? Oh, yeah. I'm ready to go. Boom. Yeah, uh, Keith, you can use a DSer if you want. If you want to use a DSer and then like automate all the parameters inside of the DSer to like clamp down differently on each S and T sounds, that's totally on you, dude. Like you can do that. Absolutely. There's not like a right again. Like there's not like a right or wrong way or anything like that. This is just the way that I prefer to do it. Yeah, <laughs> we got we got a lot of uh, a lot of dogs saying hi back, which is cool. Oh, yeah, light show. We'll do a light show after the break. All right. All right. Let's flow into this, guys. Let's flow into this second verse. Um, yo, 902,732, if you're ready to continue. Don't forget your commas, folks. It's moving a lot slower than it usually is. People, I think people are uh, people are onto the gag, Rob. <laughs> I think people are over it. Get Those, out. Dip. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. It's gonna take a dip, and then the next couple times, it's just gonna slowly start to. It'll climb. come back around. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, let's dig in here. Let's see what we got. Uh... Satisfied in love, whether it's wrong or right. Ah, uh, yeah. No, it never is enough. Beautiful. No, one get in there. Get out the scalpel. No, it never is enough. And I actually want to bring this whole phrase up. No, it never is enough. Never satisfied in love. No, it never is in. Uh, never. No, it never is in now. You guys, catch what I did there? I just pulled down this this peak a little bit on never. Never hits like super hard. But not like in an obvious way, right? In a way that's just kind of like lightly squishing it. And then we'll do another layer of, you know, like kind of leveling if we need to. No, it never is enough. Oh, this voice. The voice. <laughs> no, it never is enough. 
that that vibrato you know no one never is enough yeah totally somebody said those endings are magic yeah absolutely that's why we do this no one never is enough never satisfied Ooh. and then we got back to breath city no one never is enough never satisfied in in love. Let's not lose that. Never satisfied in love. <sighs> Never satisfied in love. Nice. More. Never More. satisfied in love. <laughs> More. Never satisfied. Let's tear these down. Never satisfied. Never satisfied in love. I think just that first one. Hmm. With her is wrong. Right in love. With her is wrong. There's my moment. That's yeah. my favorite moment in the whole song. Grab that. That's my, that's like, ugh. It's, it's just after it comes out of the BVs as well, it like transitions so nicely. Ugh. Yeah. Even after all we face. I'm leaving it. It's Freddie Mercury all day, and I, I, I'm all about it. Hit that transition again. Yep. And then we'll just account for that. Swell and volume. See, if we take this down a little bit, it's not going to affect the character. You know, the intensity, the inflection, it's its all still there. Even after all we face. A little too much. Even after all we face. Yeah, actually, I'm going to get really, like, nitpicky with this part. Because I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's worth but it. As he goes down and regis right in pitch we start to get buried a little bit right so we're going to bring that into the opposite direction Even after all we face. level it out Even after all we face. Ugh. Amazing. i think maybe just brought that up a touch too much even after all we face wonder if i love to Whoa. What's that? There's a little about a time. It kind of works. Yeah. I'm going to take. It's W up. Wonder if I love the same. Just that W. What? What? Wonder if I love the same. It's been so long, I really need a few things. Wonder if I love the same. Ah, I keep going over to do it the old way. Wonder if I love the same. And here. Yeah. It's been so long.
don't really need to feel your touch Same It's been so long, I really need to feel your touch Never loves the same It's been so long, I really need to feel your touch It's been so long, I really The first one It's been so long, I really need to feel your touch There's that chunker. Grab it. It's been so long, I really oh, too much. It's been so long, I really need to feel you touch. It's been so long, I really need to feel you touch. Ah, oh, yeah. I like the rest of that. That sounded pretty solid. Let's see. Let's listen through the whole darn verse. I was gonna say, how far through are we? Overall. We got a chorus, chorus two, a bridge, final chorus. We don't have to go through and like do automation for the whole thing. You know, we could do some other processing, things like that. Just if you guys get the point, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Anyone have any like questions? No, it never is enough. Never satisfied in is wrong or right yeah even after all we face wonder if our love's the same it's been so long I really need to feel you touch yep that's a verse if you lose audio during the zoom uh, just log out and log back in usually fixes it Someone asked, is it normally just a case of bringing up the tail? That's definitely common, right? It's a mixture. But you can kind of see what Jake's doing here. It's, yep, there's some intimacy. That's a big part of it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a matter of just making the choices. It's a matter of just like taste. You know, what do you want to bring out? What kind of character do you want to bring out? You know, what's poking out at you? What's not poking out enough? It's crafting, you know, you're just, you're crafting. <laughs> Pretty record. Yeah, anywhere between minus 10, minus 20 is kind of like the sweet spot for my input. No, I don't know. What about the artists? Should they approve these changes? If if they hired you and said, hey, like, do your thing with my vocal, then no, you don't like, you don't need to go that deep with them. Um, in the revision process, they say, hey, let's bring this word up or down or whatever, or this phrase up or down. Then you just work with it. No, but you don't have to go through and just be like, hey, I made uh, 973 cuts to your vocal region, and here's what I did on every single one. They do won't. You green, do you green light this? You know, nobody's going to do that. <laughs> well, I have no idea what you did. They'll just be like, why does it sound so good? Exactly. Exactly. And, and occasionally, maybe one little critique, oh, bring this word up or down. I mean, that's what it always is. Yeah, nobody. I've never lost a job from... <laughs> Making their voices sound in that really scenario <laughs> for making their voices sound good. <laughs> exactly. Um, cool. So do we want to, we want to move on here? Uh, let's finish. Yeah. Let's finish the lead. You want to move up? You want to finish the lead for the whole song, the whole track? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, what automation that yep. might, might do be it. here a while. No, nah, do it. Cru cruise Could you through. do it like speedy mode, Jake, so we can hear the finished product. Like, like, like what? Finish out the song, just like be less discerning. Finish out the lead, just uh, less teaching, more go go quicker. Let's finish. Right. So please tell me lie. So please. Well, I'm gonna cook. So please. So please 
So please tell me lies. 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 So why don't So why don't have to go to bed another lonely night? So why don't have to go to bed another lonely night? <laughs> Hello. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me. You can tell. Make me satisfied anything to make me satisfied Make me satisfied Pretty Even more. What you really think? What you really What you really think? Who you are inside? Hear that? 
Mm -hmm. Tasty. Check this out. You know you want. Oh, where did it come from? You know you want. I could have swore I heard a breath somewhere in here and that it was like a, a, a messy crossfade. Yeah. You know you want. It's in the um, high pad chorus track. Right here. That. Bye bye. So it sounds goofy there, but it might not. can't even tell in text yeah exactly oh you there it is free and clear <laughs> People were very impressed by that, Jake. And we'll teach you how to do it too. Book a call. So let's pretend. So let's pretend. Well, let's pretend we've got consistency. So let's pretend. So let's pretend the we are. So let's pretend the we. Oh, I love it. Him to trail off. So please tell me, love. So please tell me. Almost there. Tell me, love. Tell me, love. So please tell me. So please tell. So why don't I <laughs> So why don't I have to go to bed another lonely night So why don't I have to go to bed another lonely night You see I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me sad. Need a quick break before I hit this final chorus. Quick fiber. Oh, just quick. Uh, not even five. Just a couple minutes here. Like one or. Couple minutes. Warner. <laughs> yeah, that was worth the extra five, ten minutes to finish that up. 
let's get this thing done man was it 10 15 yeah 10 15 how long does this take it i mean it'll it should take like an hour maybe yeah good like hour. Half anywhere between 30 and 60 minutes to like do this for a lead vocal like this in this structure in this format right um for those of you who are like working with hip-hop i don't really do this unless it's necessary right it's it's a lot it's a lot so you kind of like pick and choose your moments that you get really really detailed you know if you're working with rap depends depends on the song i'll always do some some it becomes uh diminishing returns if you do too much because there's exactly. just so much content yeah exactly it's always for me when it it's comes to it's usually a lot less dynamic yeah yeah not like this is a, a huge dynamic swings in this vocal rap is closer to spoken word depends on the goal as well right like if you just yep. want dynamic consistency then you could just whack on vocal rider but as you've like seen here it's it's way more subjective than that with a track like this and, and a lot of tracks it's it's not about dynamic consistency if anything it's the opposite going back to day one when we got rid of the compressed vocal and pulled in the raw vocal it increased the dynamic range significantly right. um so yeah you can't beat this but it's contextual there are situations where yeah you just want to do it, do it quickly whack on vocal rider or i'm sure there's probably other plugins out there now i've just always used vocal rider but um yeah this is totally different the dreaded answer in audio right depends it depends <laughs> that's why it takes us two years <laughs> to really get someone to a good standard Does it always you depends. have to understand the context you have to build those instincts yeah. cool let's crush it so i don't have to go to bed another lonely night you see i don't so i don't have to go to bed another lonely night you see I didn't even have to bring that up. <laughs> you can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Ow. The biggest one of all. And then the biggest snake of all waiting for us at the end. It's the if boss. Any of you, if any of you remember the vocal challenge, this is how the song originally ended. It was kind of just a normal, like the other choruses ended. It didn't go big like this. And did do that falsetto thing. In fact, the melody we re in real time we kind of rewrote the whole melody on this last chorus. That was when I was getting my my tick bite looked at. Oh, that's true. I missed that part. I don't know if you guys were there. Who was there for that? Anybody there for that? I had pulled a tick out of my my hip in the middle of that <laughs> the middle of that session, <laughs> and my wife made me go to urgent care. <laughs> Man, oh, the, the jokes were endless that day. <laughs> oh, good times. Great oldies. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. That is more palatable. To make me satisfied. So much. I'm tempted to just leave it the way it is, man. Like, it's a lot of volume. Uh, I'll I'll just bring it down a scooch. It's just scoot. Oh no, not the whole thing. <laughs> That is 
that's not out of tune. That's not out of tune. maybe but that's uh, i like uh livery i hear it all the time there's a lot of modern vocals where a big moment like this is slightly sharp i think it's actually quite kind of effective sinks yeah it sinks in it's not like Attack a little bit pretty Pretty liar, pretty liar. Not just a little bit more and listen, roll into it a little bit. I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Pretty liar. In context, if I was to listen to that over and over and over again, I'm like, we basically just did. <laughs> They <laughs> were like, ah, oh, that bothers me. I think in context, I'm cool with it. I'm going to let it be. Again, like, it's just a taste thing. Somebody else might treat that a little bit differently. I and don't think we've tuned this at all, though. Like, you could throw a subtle auto-tune on the whole thing. Uh, very subtle, but. Do that. Pretty loud. I just don't, I don't think it subtle. needs to be I said subtle. Pretty loud. Pretty loud. Nah, I'm good with that ending too. The the crowd has spoken. No tune. <laughs> it doesn't need it. Oh, honestly. The masses have spoken. I wouldn't even do it. I wouldn't even do it. But again, dude, that's the importance. That's the conversation, right? And that's the important conversation to be had. Is different strokes here. One you know? of the most valuable hours you could spend right there. There it is in, in all its glory with all its crossfades. Yeah, that's right. All its crossfades. Don't, don't use that. Um, all of that making sense, guys? You with us? You still, still with us? Still not know. an ounce of EQ compression tune or reverb on the vocal whatsoever we still haven't even touched it yeah so that what we everyone will. was expecting we will now Probably but not. that's pretty good look how far we got it again just with volume gain and volume yeah man gain and volume totally it's already like it, it was mic'd well too you know what i mean so like the the lifting the amount of lifting that we do from this point forward is like barely any right it's beautiful. Well, he had good mic technique you know we set the mic up but he knows how to work it that's the importance of getting it right right getting it right at the source mm. i'm gonna bounce this oh crap try rats i think there's a risk of uh I saw some comments the other day about oh you know but this already sounds great why you know why don't you guys use a really poor recording it's like okay, sh like yeah, it's a good, good mic technique, but anyone, anyone can learn how to do that. That's why we have a whole nine weeks on production. Yeah, I mean, so we could use a, a really bad vocal, but why would we want to take those clients? I don't take those clients. I was that's where I was gonna go. <laughs> Change our mindset. Let's not even work with. I promise you this. I've done this for my whole life. The people who pay me the least for my work also hate the finished product the most. Why is that? They pay me the least. They hate it the most. They pay me the least because they don't care as much. They pay me the least because it's all 99% of the time not very good. And they expect me to make them sound like Kanye and it's unreasonable. My happiest clients of all time are the ones that have paid me the very most. 
They appreciate what I do. They have reasonable expectations. They know what's going on. That's the mindset shift. I promise you it's true. Find those people that will pay you really well and love what you do for them even more. It's no joke. There's a lot of opportunity these days as well to kind of upsell mastering clients, upsell mixing clients into production. It's all becoming a lot more holistic. Again, this is why we teach the whole thing holistically. It's not separated anymore. You could be mastering a track for someone and this is, you know, this is how kind of Thierry was born in the first place. It's like the majority of the time when we get set tra sent tracks to master, we're giving them back mix notes. You get a track sent, you know, to you to mix and you're giving production notes. It's like, well, there's a lot of uh, upselling opportunities there as well to create kind of custom packages for clients and help them with that stuff. Whether that's like educating them. Yeah, I get people, I had someone reach out to me the other day asking me to master a couple of tracks for them and film it and explain what I'm doing. And you can charge, you know, $500 for a master then, not 50. So there's there's all kinds of stuff you can do like as, when you start to see this holistically. Yeah, and you know, someone asked earlier, can can I take just one of the segments of the program? I don't even think we answered it. Absolutely not. No, you covered it. No, I think Rob Right, well, I, I spoke about foundations, but I think Caleb's about to make a different point. <laughs> We absolutely don't sell them separately because the because the level that you're looking for is only found when you understand the entire process. This is what we found in years and years and years of teaching. You could learn one of the segments and be totally disconnected from how it applies to everything else, and you won't get as much out of it. That's not the level you want to go to. We found that the best way to do it is holistically. And by the way, we're not this in this. We're not uh, shooting in the dark. If you go to Abbey Roads. This is how they teach you. They teach you the entire process. Even if you're only a mix engineer, you learn mastering, you learn production, you learn everything and how it's all tied together. So there's there's method to the, that madness for sure. Cool. 4D, baby. All right. That is the lead vocal. Now we got to continue to, <laughs> continue to process it. That's it. And clean up the background vocals. Yeah, that's right. I think before we um, get into actual processing with that lead vocal, I do want to clean up the background vocals first, right? That makes so, sense. You kind of see what, you'll have a better understanding of what you need to do with the lead vocal once you make space for it and how it should be, right? Make exactly. Sense, yeah. yeah, kind of the most obvious spot is here, right? that final chorus where all those elements kind of come into play that, that, that final choir comes in and there's a lot of masking going on there. Right. So like, we got to clean that up a little bit before we, before we dive in there. So let's do it. Let's cook. You guys ready to cook? 78. If you're ready to cook. <laughs> got to bring it back. Some people, this uh, this is the first time we've ever had anyone on the uh, challenge. It's like, I hate the numbers game. It's just like, I hate it. Somebody said that? I hate the numbers game. Somebody said that? For real? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, sorry. <laughs> I just want to connect. We're just lonely. Nope. We're doing numbers. So I don't have to go to bed. I can hear that immediately. It's a lot. Yeah, it's like. <sighs> Sorry, I forgot how to use this for a second. Like really digging out a lot of sonic energy there. Have to go to bed. Right. There's so much stuff already in those ranges. Having it in there is only redundant. It's not helping. Crazy. You see. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me. 
brain <laughs> sticking out like a sore thumb. <laughs> so uh, not uh, a lot of you like <laughs> probably not a lot of you know this, but Dane's like eight feet tall. Okay. He's <laughs> so he's I'm a giant imagine, man. I'm imagining him like in this choir, like with a bunch of like five foot tenors, you know? He's like the He's like the awkward Dane. girl that grew up too fast in like third grade and they're like six foot. And there's Dane. There's ah! Dane. In the middle of everybody sticking up like a middle finger. Dane's going to hop on and master later, by the way. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I, just, I just hit him up. He's down. Sorry. Then another lonely night. You see. You can tell me anything. That's where we're going. A little bit. Oh, one of those lower, those lower choir risers. You, know? you can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Pretty life. Pretty laugh. Fading for safety. Listen to that through again. Yep, those are just gain moves. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. Kind of a frequency in that main belt of. of Got it. Drilling into my head just a little bit. It's probably that one. A lot of times when I'm working with background vocals like this, you notice that Jake did those EQ moves on the entire bus. So it's everything all together, which is where I also start because you can solve most of what you would do individually, save you a ton of time and then hear for what's left to then do that on kind of an individual track basis. Just solve the problems you're hearing. If you, if you don't hear it, it's not a problem. So, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to group all those belts together. Oh. There it is. So there's a few different spots here, and we're going to just hit that with a narrow cue. Just one of them. This would be a way. nice place for Soothe, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Ah. Can't. Can't. Can't do it. Can't do it. We're oh, challenging ourselves. There's with... the drinking game. Yeah. Like that one. Right like that. Let's just go right like that. Get it. Better? That's much more listen toable. <laughs> Felt like I was at the dentist. <laughs> uh, the difference here guys i'm just gonna play that one note you're hearing like the <laughs> wild we cut out some info so i'm just gonna adjust compensate <gasps> You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Pretty life. Ooh. A little better. Tell me anything to make me satisfied. 
we'll just do like a fun little Very slight. We did not vocal line the tracks. Very slight. I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Pretty liar. Pretty liar. Pretty liar. crescendo there cool and i think we're okay on that choir I'll never forget dane's face when he's belting those notes he was really going for it <laughs> <laughs> cool let's take a quick break we're at the top of the hour yeah. Well, dig into the next bit. Do a fiver, and then we are going to. This is what we're going to do. Process dem vocals. So I'm going to bring up a timer. My favorite timer, in fact. Best timer out there, in my opinion. The Goog. The old Google timer here. See you guys here. Back Someone was, I'm actually going to take control. Someone was asking about a little couple of questions about curriculum. Oh. Um, All right, I'll put away the Goog. While we're, while we're just chilling for any of you. And by the way, if, again, if you had a problem booking a call, you did break our site for a minute. Try again for sure. For real? Yeah. Um, I want to go over, I mean, we could go look at school, the school group for the reverse engineer. A um, couple cool things. We introduced that AI chat bot, which is awesome. Students love that. The... Uh, also discount document not to be missed we get discounts because it's an education so you can um, get the education discounts and we also have some special discounts for tons of stuff uh, would save you a lot of money i think you could save thousands of dollars with those uh, for sure but you can see the community very active lots of comments i mean 105 comments on that one everyone's really trying to help each other <clears throat> really high level stuff can see our classroom this is where we keep all of the the information it's going to consist of when uh videos lectures reading this is an example of a three hour and 43 minute just on eq eqing 35 songs in one part of the thing so very comprehensive when we were building it out we were saying do we want to go minimalism or just give everything and we just decided you know what i think what people want is deeper they want more then we go into mixing same type of thing it's all curated here i love when we get though to production part so this is like the production por portion look at what we get to talk about see this is what's so unique about this you've spent so much time training and becoming you know instinctual about the tools the technical part that we don't have to talk about any of that when it comes to production. You take it, I've, I've taken uh, production programs before, and so much of it was getting that part up to speed so you could even use the tools. But by then, in this part of the program, all we're talking about is things like observation and translation and movement and atmosphere and emotion and character, vocal production, of course, too, which is really important. We get to focus on stuff that, that I mean, we had to completely write this from 
from nothing. There's nothing like this out there. Not, none of this exists. We had to try to find ways of how to systemify emotion, which we realize you can't fully do, but we give you a, a guidebook to explore it. And it's very, very powerful. It's very cool. You can see on our calendar, we have daily, almost daily uh, calls with mentors where you can get on. And even if you want to just go look at some of this stuff on our website, mastering.com, we actually have the whole curriculum listed out for you. You can see we have our mentors listed up here. A couple of them that haven't been here, Dane, he's going to pop up later. We love Dane. We have uh, Kevin Black Pearl McCloskey. He's a Grammy-nominated multi-platinum mix engineer. He's worked with the baby. Daniel Grimmett, he's the man. He's put more producers on the map than anyone in the industry. He's usually like three, four a grand a month to work with privately. You get to work with him privately in our elective program. Those interviews as well, actually, we just added those. They're worth checking out as well. Yeah, some interviews with students, but you can go through and actually look at the entire curriculum. We call them weeks, but they're more like modules. They're more like, you know, it doesn't matter if it takes a week or not. We just call them weeks. You can see it's very comprehensive. Week three, they call it hell week in the program because we have to get your room dialed in. We have to give you an accurate listening environment. 90% of you are probably not listening in an environment that's accurate. So what's the point of ear training or learning any of these tools or doing any of this if it sounds so different in the car or if it sounds so different, you know, when you release it out to people. Anyway, check this stuff out. And again, like uh, I believe the website crashed. So I don't know, Rob, if you want to put that link up for people. Hopefully everyone that got a call can, or, or got a, wanted to have a call could have a, you know, a chance to speak with somebody. Yeah, no, I think the calendar just booked up really quickly, um, but there are slots now. Caleb, if you go, a few people were asking about, um, the like week nine, the Daniel Grimmett stuff. I don't know if you want to show that quickly. Sure. Absolutely. Um, I got saw another question. Are you doing that? Apart from course cost, how much should I expend, expect to spend software to complete the course? Software? I mean, if you want, you just do it with your door and stock plugin. There's like a few other like monitoring plugins um, we highly recommend. And again, we've got discounts on them. But I mean, you could spend a couple of hundred, you could spend. 20 grand <laughs> but it, it really doesn't matter too much like what we're going to teach you like you could do everything with pretty much exclusively stock plugins at a certain point you will probably want to get more than the stock plugins but you could do it all with stock plugins so then you just have to pay for the door and whatever recording equipment you need but again we're talking like hundreds on the low end and on the upper end i mean like if you start talking about outboard equipment and that's when it gets crazy but like Cade was saying not essential no, we recommend like, I think three, three things that we recommend to buy and they're, you know, one's a hundred dollars, one's $30, <laughs> the other one's like maybe $80 or something. Um, that's, a, that's it. That's all we recommend. And there, there are optional. Some students uh, don't want to do that and they, they do uh, other plugins, which is totally fine. I think the thing you'll have to think about is room. You may need to invest in building some traps or buying some traps or doing some of that because Again, without room, nothing else works. It's the domino that if you don't have set up, nothing else falls. And so we have to go through that. We do that early in the program because everything else hinges on your ability to hear and start doing ear training in an environment that's accurate so that you become a wizard with that stuff. You could tell, you can tell uh, the, the frequency your refrigerator is making. You know, you're going to start to be able to hear sound like 99.9% .9 of the population doesn't know how to. When it comes to Daniel Grimmett's stuff, a lot of it's mindset stuff and also a journey to full-time. We're talking about how to get your clients, priming your profiles. So it's really just like scripts to, for reaching out, building, uh, building out your infrastructure. And this should help you get started. It should help you get the journey. In fact, you could just really, if you're really good, follow these principles and do really well. And then if you want to go to a deeper elective program where we dive into it even more and again, work with, um, with uh, industry professionals other than our team, people we bring in, connections, there, there's value there too. And uh, yeah, cool. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, so yeah, I've seen a bunch more questions. Um, I'll try and speed through these. So 
Do, 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 do. Um, is foundations only part one? Exactly. So foundations, like I was saying earlier, is kind of uh, slightly more affordable. It's just part one. That's it. It's pretty self-explanatory. Most people do it. Yeah. Eventually, we're planning on doing like part two and part three. Um, what's the difference between thirty-seven dollar membership for full program six thousand eight hundred? So thirty-seven dollars for VIP. That's just tomorrow is the VIP day where Jake's going to be mixing a different track from scratch. So it's just a kind of a way to extend this event. But um, that's it. It's just like tomorrow um, you get access to that, and uh, and then yeah. it's kind of it's finished. Extra um, day, an extra mix, more access to the replays. Yeah. So the majority, like that's, you know, a lot of people who have joined VIP are normally the, the kind of people who will go on to do the full program. Um, do you believe the program's possible in headphones only? I saw someone yeah. asking they have all uh, LCDXs, which we all love. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, we won't go into it like super in depth now, but the, the short answer, Caleb, <laughs> which oh, yeah. says the short answer. No, I. I I have students that for whatever reason can only do that and you can go really, really far. In fact, I, I'm pretty sure that you could learn. You just have to kind of think about a few things, but, and train yourself on a few things, but you can totally be successful in headphones. It's, yeah. not, it's not a good enough reason to not stop, start learning. Cause you can always build out a room later and do monitors later, but don't, don't delay the education. I saw a couple of people asking, like, can you do it in less than two years? Absolutely. I, I, like, you could do it in 28 weeks if you actually did the, the weeks week by week. Um, I think the reality is, like, some weeks you'll probably get stuck on for a little bit. Other weeks you'll plow through really quickly. But if you were, like, full time, you probably could do it in half a year. Oh, yeah. Um, you could be rocking on less. six months. But we still give you that mentorship because even if you get to the place where you're starting to work with clients or you're getting to that level, there's still going to be that fi last five minute, uh, five percent of refinement and uh, customer situations and opportunities that come. If you want to like talk about contracts and start coming your way, you're going to want that extra year of, of professional help where you can hop on and, and work with people who've done this before. Yeah. Um, and then someone said you get a certificate. So for us, it's the focus is a lot more on the portfolio than the certificate. People don't really care in this industry if you have a certificate or not. I think Nobody we cares. we started doing we started doing it anyway because so many people were asking <laughs> that I think we have set that up now. But yeah, it's not you a, don't really need it. Yeah, you um, should celebrate. We you know we can we can send you something that that's nice, but it's more about if you want to you know, get a job in the industry or have clients. It's more about what you can do. If you can wow people, that's your greatest calling card. That's the greatest certificate you could hang on your wall. It's just the ability to wow people. Yep. And Jack said, having mentors to help with work you're getting paid for. Yep, absolutely. And, and obviously like there's a real mix here. Some, most people come into the program as artists. They're, you know, a lot of you here are probably primarily producing your own music so so of course that's always there there's always that long term goal of having like a career as an artist but when you develop these skills what we find is a lot of people kind of transition halfway through the program they start thinking oh actually i quite like this mixing and mastering stuff maybe i'll go out and do that as a way of supporting myself while i'm still working on my artist career so just as a kind of a, a side note but yeah absolutely like we help people whether it's through the mentorship that you already have access to or through the electives it's like cool step one learn how to produce music to professional standard no small feat and we go the whole way zero to 100 um which is why it's so in depth but then step two is is going to be slightly different for everyone is it sync is it you know, developing your career as an artist, growing a fan base, is it building a mixing, a mastering business, building a production business? We can help with all of that. And that's where it becomes a little bit more diverged. And that's why we have electives where it's specializing in one of those areas. But you'll still have access to Caleb and Jake and um, all the other mentors to, to get help with that stuff, even if you don't do electives. Yep. Awesome questions. It's the kind of stuff I'd be asking. Jake, you feeling fresh? Your ears good? Yeah, feeling super fresh, baby. Let's do this. All right. How about you guys? You guys feeling fresh? Cool. Fresh, fresh. Fresh, shitty, fresh. Yep. 7,233 if you're feeling fresh. Too easy. 
Got to ease him back into it. It's funny again. I hate the numbers game. I hate <laughs> it. Oh. Those, somebody those coming num- in. Those numbers. <laughs> from day one. So from distracting. The six the mix we've ever done. <laughs> it just like continues to come in. It's just like, ah, I hate the numbers game. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we've been doing this gig since day one. <laughs> All right. Let's get in here. Let's process them vocals. You know, I'm not hearing a whole lot wrong with these vocals, right? So I'm just going to kind of like listen through again, take some notes. Got going on. boys and girls excuse me sorry guys so i don't have to go to bed another lonely night you see i don't mind you can tell That's what I got. Anything to add, Caleb? Rob? I almost want to see if we Mm. can do a a tuning on it that no one can hear. All these people that are in the chat like, no tuning. 
There was still, I, I mean, this is very subjective, but there are a couple of points where like just intermittent balancing things, things like poking out a little bit, mostly with the vocal being a little bit too, like, for example, just before the last, uh, chorus hits, it's, uh, it's a little bit loud coming into it. Just like little, little, like kind of balancing tweaks. I got, yeah, I got that too. Oh, is that CH? Okay. Yep. Chorus levels. Got it. Right on. Keep well, in. let's tackle some of this more like, you know, this volume stuff here, and then we'll move into some of this other stuff. You got any, um, have you already done like reverb and stuff in the vocals? Was that yesterday? Did I miss that? We don't have any on there. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. it dry. Yep. It dry. Word so and chorus one. Start there. So please So please So please So desperate for your love So please Tell me so please And there are some tracks of vocal uh reverb throws and stuff. They're on separate tracks, uh, not baked in. So please tell me lie. That's that. Verse two. Wonder if our love's the same. Never satisfied in is wrong or right, yeah, even after all we face, wonder if our love's the same, it's been so long or Yeah, that's not bad. I'm gonna, I mean, there's a sweet spot, right? Let's roll into it. But in love, whether it's wrong or right, yeah. Even after all we face, wonder if our love's the same. It's been so long, I really need to feel you touch. So please tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see So please tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see I don't have 
why don't have to go to bed so why don't have to go to bed so why don't have to go to bed another lonely night you see You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Pretty liar, pretty liar, pretty liar. Look at that again. So please tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed. I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see, I don't mind You can tell me anything to make me satisfied Pretty This one just has to be hit again. Dip it and then I come back. Pretty lie. Pretty lie. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Just a touch. Yeah, just a sweet spot to be at here. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Pretty lie. Anything else that's done on that note will have to be done with frequencies. Cool. That's basically just another pass at, you know, with gain automation. Those were all the issues that I was hearing anyway. So I'm going to bounce those in place. Uh, let's do some T-Pain auto-tune. <laughs> That's what we need. No one ever saw you cry Saw you hide behind your walls so high so you won't fall you saw tears in all my pain i was oh, it's waves tune it's like their their melodyne what's waves auto tune anybody know it is waves tune real tune real time tune real time There's a couple. Yeah. Have you got have you got literally everything? Yep. So yeah, waves tune real time. Um there's also oh, waves yeah, tune vocal one. pitch correction, which is more like melodyne. There we go. Waves tune. So this is like auto tune or there's 
waves yeah. tune regular, which is more like Melodyne. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. You saw tears in all my pain. Sorry, I don't know how to use this, so I'm like figuring it out. Learning. I will show it on my face. So desperate for your love. So please tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. Uh, I don't know the key of this song. Hey. Ooh, yeah. You see, I don't mind. And done. <laughs> That's it. You can leave it. Uh... No one ever saw you cry. Saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. <laughs> you can just set it to chromatic, Jake. You don't need to put the key in. I'm just going to bake that in. You saw tears in all my pain I will show it on my face So desperate for your love So please tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see, I don't mind He says it's in B Tell, tell me anything to make me B flat, B flat, B flat. Pretty liar, pretty liar. It's actually in, it's not B flat, no it's G. I saw you cry, saw you hide behind your wall. Either G minor or B flat major. So high, so you won't fall. It's G minor though, more, but either works. Cool trick I learned the other day. So if you put it into a key that can be really good for a uh, less dynamic vocal, there's some singers when they're, they're doing a lot of slides and a lot of runs and stuff, if you just leave it on chromatic, it actually helps not box it in so much and sounds so tuned, but it'll still uh, bring it closer. Pretty cool. Yep, not doing it. I just don't know the tool. <laughs> I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. I'm not going to sit here and waste your guys' time. Like, figure it out. I, see, so I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make. Does anybody remember the word? There was a one word. It's right there. You just passed it. Anything. Oh, I did? Yeah. You can tell me anything. That's just flat. Um, so we're just going to hit that with the DAWs flex pitch tool. Call it a day on tuning. Still got a lot to cover. Tell me anything. Somebody says peace at last. <laughs> peace at last. <laughs> peace at last. All right. Yeah, I, I understand mild mild autism for sure. You guys do your thing. I get it. I'm there with you. Do a little bit of tone sculpting here. Not too much. You know, just think it needs it. Yeah, bigger. No one 
I saw you cry. Is that cycle we were talking about earlier? Yeah, there's actually that tube and that mic's actually going bad. So there's actually a 60 cycle hum going on in that thing. So you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. You saw tears in all my pain. I will show it on my face. So desperate for your love. I'm gonna kind of get that sitting in a good spot here. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. You saw tears in all my pain, I will show it on my face. So desperate for your love So clear No one ever saw you cry Saw you hide behind your walls You build so high so you won't fall You saw tears in all my pain I will show it on my face So desperate for your love so clear. No one ever saw you cry. Saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high. So uh, you hear you hear the difference there, guys? I'm scooping out like these low mids here on this lead vocal, just taking care of a little bit of that build up. No one ever saw you cry. Saw you hide behind your walls. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your walls. You know, not too drastically or anything like that. Another thing I think can make vocals sound a bit karaoke is too much of that range. It's that proximity mic thing, like someone's up on a karaoke bar too close to the mic. Yep. Carve that out. Yep. So just kind of like gently dipping that out. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. You saw tears in all my pain, I will show it on my face. So desperate for your love. So please. No one ever saw you cry. Saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. Cool. Um, next, I'm gonna do some light DSing. There's a DSer. What's siblings do. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your walls. It's going to get a little annoying while we dial this in. Bear with me. No one ever saw you cry. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your walls. I actually, I, I mean, default settings, dude. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your walls. You... you saw tears in all my pain, I will show it on my face. Love it. This is a great plugin. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. You saw tears in all my pain. I will show it on my face. So desperate for you. No one ever saw you cry. Saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. You saw tears in all my pain. I will show it on my face. So 
desperate for your love. No one ever saw you cry. Ah, wow. Like what that does, it's uh, a lot of uh, DS or plugins make stuff sound like someone has a list. Garbage. Like this garbage. Kind of, like, this is kind of making the S's like more buttery. It, that's really nice. Phenom plugin. Yeah, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal plugin. Oh. Usually a lot of that Lisp stuff comes from people throwing it on before they do all the work we did to control them already. So it's having to work too hard. Yeah, it's really nice. I'm gonna set with I'm gonna sit with that for now. Um let's keep going. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. You saw tears in all my pain. I will show it on my face. So desperate for your love. So I think just a little too much on the C4 for my taste. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. Cool. Um, a little bit more. Uh. Upper mid on belts, okay. You said, so please tell me lie. So please tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell. Where's the F6? There we go. And uh, some buildup happening here. <laughs> right, like dead on this default band. <laughs> it knows. It knows. That's right. It knows. Um, and we're just going to tame that with some dynamic EQ. Uh, the reason I'm using a dynamic EQ instead of just like a regular EQ is I don't want to cut that section out completely, only during the moments of buildup, okay? Only during the moments of buildup. Please tell me lies. You know, we can see, I mean, we can see it happening here. This is what's annoying me. I can hear that this is what's annoying me. So we're gonna... Tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see, I don't mind You can tell me anything to make me satisfied Please tell me Right at the beginning there, we're going to solo this so please, so please. That one. So please. Already sounding better. So please. So please tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Pretty. So nice. So please. Listen. So please. 
So please. So please. Hear the difference? You guys hearing the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's less of that kind of like <laughs> needle in your eye <laughs> moment. <laughs> so please tell me lie. You probably do like a little bit more deep work um, to clean some of the other frequencies out, the, the frequencies above that that 2800 right so it would kind of look like a comb kind of going up but i think that's i think that's good enough so please tell me lies so i don't have to go to bed another lonely night a curiosity um So please tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see, I don't mind You can tell me anything to make me satisfied Pretty liar, pretty liar Pretty love. No, it never is enough. Never satisfied in love. Whether it's wrong or right. Yeah. Actually, gonna keep that low pass there. Um, just to kind of like dial it back a little bit, you know? Um, a lot of air, a lot of air. And we'll, honestly, we'll probably reintroduce it with some kind of like some goodie bag plugins, right? Some like saturation and, and things like that, like subtle enhancements. So we'll probably bring it back, but I don't know. I'm kind of liking where that's sitting the vocal in the grand scheme of things. Again, just a, just a preference. Even after all we face, wonder if I love the same. It's been so long, I really need to feel your touch So please, tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see, I don't mind Cool. Um, maybe we do some dynamics processing? <laughs> we've done no compression yet <laughs> right we've done That's no amazing. <laughs> you can tell me anything to make me satisfied pretty live yeah cool my ears a second um let's do You know, I think I'm going to go straight into the LA 2A. Take all this plays with the vocal a little bit. No one ever. That's not right. <laughs> No, that's not right. Let's kind of just, just, let it just gently kiss this, this thing here. So please tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't.
Yeah, so I just kind of like, I kind of dialed this back a little bit using the mix knob back to 80%. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your wall. Dude, just pushing this voice through that circuitry, like that LA-2A circuitry is just cool. phenomenal, dude. Just pushing it through the circuitry. It's probably not even reacting right now in the beginning, right? You build so high so you won't fall. It's just slightly here and there. You saw tears in all my pain. I will show it on my face. About it. So desperate for your love. That's flavor, baby. So please tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Uh, because the track's in mono. out all those upper mids that were poking out on that vocal uh earlier on too right with those belts anything to make me satisfied pretty loud pretty loud pretty loud turn it off Wow. Yeah, maybe a little quiet, but uh, you have to realize we're still going to add some space to it, which is going to make it sound bigger. And there's there's always like a final pass. You know, we've done a lot of work today so far, right? Like I would have like a nice big chunky break after all that detail work. I would have a whole different day for like processing or not a whole different day, but a whole different like session for processing and um, getting this sitting right. And then I would have a whole nother session for just kind of like objective rebalance um, if needed, Any anything that um, would need like enhancements and things like that. It's like big chunky breaks between these things. When I say chunky breaks, I mean like 30 minutes. You know, that's a big chunky break to me, <laughs> 30 minutes. <laughs> like big chunky break like make it sound like it's like a four hour like thing <laughs> anyway yeah this vocal uh yeah definitely let's put some reverb on this thing um but first let's take a big chunky five minute break five minutes Yeah, we'll, we, we'll do a reference check here pretty soon, too. Nick. First throwing up the goog. See you in five.
Time's up. What's <laughs> up, guys? How's everybody doing? Everybody still awake? These are long. It's long sessions. Learning a lot. Picking up some gold nuggets. Yep, super cool. What was the frequency on the low pass filter? Uh, 16,000. Yeah, about 16 ish. It's not a formula, it's a reminder. It is not a formula. Type of song am I mixing tomorrow? Uh, oh. Like a more of like dance pop. You know, it's Lucy's, Lucy on our team. She's an incredible singer. She writes great songs. Good. So yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna mix her track tomorrow. Yeah. Do you guys know that? You guys who were in the program? Or no Lucy. Is it realistic to really get this? Oh yeah, absolutely. To get this mix finished in six hours? Yeah, hundred percent. Absolutely. Recording for dialogue speech, uh, probably not the same approach. You know, I'd probably just like toss like a broadcast limiter on it or something like that. It, it depends on what it's for. How much longer today? Uh, probably like probably another hour. Is there still time to sign up for VIP? I think so, Caleb. I think is there the still link is, links in school? I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can. I think you can do it. Here. Same time tomorrow, I believe. I think it's this link. Looks right. Right. <clears throat> Either that's the link where you sell your kidney. It's one of the two. Yeah. You you decide to risk it. Roll the dice. <laughs> if it's an album, is it six hours per song? Yeah, generally. Or do you do like a 10,000 foot view of the whole album? Yeah, for albums, it, it really kind of depends. Depends on the genre too. Dreaded answer depends. You can do some time saving, you know, it, like make some moves. Uh, so like I've done some rock albums where they're just like, you know, it's all very, very consistently like the same tone, uh, all the same tones across the board, you know. Um, processing is this mostly the same across the board you could drop those all into the same session and just like put them all on the same tracks but i there's still like song to song things that need to be done it's that's just like a starting point you know i don't like doing live albums nope I just don't do them. I'm not the live album, album guy. You don't hire me for live stuff. I just won't take them. Yeah, what's different for a live album? Yeah, uh, like like live on stage kind of thing. You just lean into the performance and do the best you can. Yeah, li like mixing live or... <laughs> or mixing a live recording those two things are different mixing live is completely is just you being a chicken with your head cut off 
Um, my <laughs> uh, mixing a live <laughs> mixing a live recording is, you know, you're kind of like gauging how much editing you want to do. <laughs> how much editing do you want to do? So you're kind of you're making moves like way more in context because there's so much bleed. You can't really like you just got to accept the isolation it might not happen. <laughs> Cool. All right, let's get back. You guys ready to go? Sweet. Two in the chat if you're ready to go. <laughs> I just saw everybody like put ones in there. <laughs> Two bastard. <laughs> oh, love it. Let's set up our bucket. We talked yesterday about what affects buckets. You know, um, I didn't use any for the music because we didn't we didn't need to. All right, but typically, so how my what effects look right here. You know, I'll do like something like this. I'll route that, route those bad boys. And call this like Fox, like short, short verb. Actually, I'll read them up there. Fox long verb. Uh, Vox short delay. And then Fox long delay. Start tossing some plugins on here. Let's do, um, I'm gonna go, we had good luck with our verb yesterday. So I'm gonna stick with that today. And I'm just gonna start with like a preset. Like a short room. Yeah, Studio A, fine. Start there. Start somewhere. We can always change it later. That's right. And then for a long verb, let's do a plate. Something that's yeah, look at aptly named vocal plate. Uh, delay. Set up some delays. These things, by the way, this is the only time I will, like, these are the things that I use in a template, right? I don't really, I'm not a big templates guy because every mix is like different, right? But what I do start with is all of my like wet effects for my vocals. I typically start right there so I don't have to do like all the routing every time. This is pretty consistent. Just start with vocal wet effects. What was I doing here? That's right, delay. Good old H delay. Big. So we'll do, um, we'll start with like an eighth note delay. I like to start with ping pong. And then for my long delay, Just for like a, I don't know, something like that. Half note. So now we've got these wet effects to kind of play with and blend together, you know? Oh, where's our lead vocal? Oh, we're low. Keep looking at my notes. Keep, 
Let's do it. Start getting these all there. Short verb. Ooh, well, let's bring it across the board here. Short verb. <clears throat> Long verb. Short delay. Long delay. I'm going to go for a more felt and heard kind of effect here on the vocal. Start bringing in these verbs. Here we go. No one ever saw you cry. Saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. You saw tears in all my pain. I will show it on my face. So desperate for your love. So you might not be able to hear that if you're not used to kind of like listening for this kind of effect. It's very subtle. Again, it just kind of like sinks the vocal into a space, right? So you should exactly, Kenny, you should be able to feel it, right? You should be able to feel that. Um, let's uh solo it. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your wall. You can hear it there, right? Because it's exposed. Let's listen to the mix. No one ever saw you cry, saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. And I actually think that vote, that reverb works really well for this track. What's that? Yeah, I said, yeah, that one works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got lucky. Let's blend another one in there. See what that long one does. No one ever saw you cry. Saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. You saw tears in all my pain. I will show it on my face. So desperate for your love. So please tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. So I'm playing around with the send levels here to see what works in the verse, what works in the chorus. No one ever saw you cry. Saw you so I'm thinking right now where my head's at is like subtle, 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 subtle in the verse. Um, and then automate it up in the chorus section to kind of like open that up, make it a little gooier. So you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. You saw tears in all my pain. I will show it on my face. So desperate for your love. So please tell me lies. Let's do it. Automate those send levels. And we're going to bring it up here. See what that does. So desperate for your love. So please tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed another long.
pretty so please tell me lies so i don't have to go to bed another lonely night you see i don't mind you can tell me anything to make me satisfied pretty liar pretty then I'm just gonna take that all the way down here. Um, and I actually might do something a little bit more creative. By automating all wet effects down. Oh, that is not it. Maybe it was it. Oh, okay. Pretty liar, pretty liar, pretty liar. No, it never is enough, never satisfied in love. You guys picking that up? Right? So it's almost kind of like the stepping of wet effects just kind of blooming forth based on the journey of the song and then we get really close and intimate once that pretty liar hook happens right no one ever so pretty liar Let's listen just through the chorus so please tell me lies so i don't have to go Contrast. You know, really changes gears there on that hook. Mm -hmm. um, sweet. Okay, so we got a long, we got a short. I just want to replicate this. Uh, throughout the uh, rest of the song so bear with me guys just going to do a little bit of i don't know why a little bit of that you might be able to get away with a little bit more of the long inside of that verse two but we're going to keep it standard for now it's consistent for now we can screw with that later So there's the long verb automation. Here's the short verb. I'm gonna keep that consistent until we get to the quieter. Very end, right? <clears throat> there's a little bit of a drop course there. So I'm gonna hit, you know, hit that segment too. So please tell me lie. Right. Pretty live. Cool. Uh, let's roll into the verse two. Pretty live. Pretty live. Pretty live. No one never is enough. Never satisfied in wrong or right yeah even after all we face wonder if our love's the same it's been so long I really need to feel your touch
when those backing vocals come in, got some decisions to make, right? No one never is enough, never satisfied in love. Whether it's wrong or right, yeah. I mean, I could, it could go either way, you know? Like you could keep them dry and they still sound like pretty good in the mix, right? We could put some reverb on them. Do maybe just dial in a little bit of room. Whether it's wrong or right, yeah. Even after all we face, whether it's wrong or right, yeah. Whether it's wrong or right, yeah. Even after all we face, wonder if our love's the same. It's been so long, we really need to feel your touch. So please. little detour um what's a nice kind of like either like a, some kind of modulation or or movement based plugin i can use here yeah chorus i'm thinking like some kind of chorus you know something <laughs> something simple <laughs> Give me something simple here. Dimension D? I don't think that's waves. It's got to be waves, guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he has plenty of plugs that aren't waves that would, he knows what he exactly what he'd go for. Maybe a, maybe, no, a super tap. I mean, you could do the <clears throat> plus Wait, three. Motion? Plus six, minus six. Motion sounds a blur. like it makes sense. I don't see it here, though. Well, oh, Brower. Uh, Brower motion is a circular panner yeah sure let's go for it let's do that <laughs> that might just do the trick right off the default oh. settings let's check it out oh, please tell me I'll take those when I can get them. <laughs> cheap, uh, cheap wins, baby. Uh, yeah, I actually, I might uh, just stick a little bit of a shelf on there. So please tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see, I don't And this one popping out a little too much for my taste. I'm gonna bring that back. And this one not popping out enough for my taste. I'm gonna bring that up. Gonna make me satisfied. Pretty liar. Pretty liar. Pretty liar. So 
for me i'm gonna leave it nice sorry that was a quick detour rabbit hole yeah try not to i usually would just like take a note or something like that come back to it i'm almost thinking like a gooier you know, like a longer kind of background. Was there a wrong right? Yeah. Even after all we face, wonder if our love's the same. It's been so long, I really need to feel your touch. So please tell me lies. Just gonna gain that up a little bit. It's been so long, I really need to feel your touch Her is wrong, but right, yeah Even after all we face Wonder if our love's the same It's been so long, I really need to feel your touch So please That's a vocal that I would go in and get a little bit more detailed with It's been so long, I really need to feel your touch so please tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night Ah, oh, Brandy <laughs> I can hit that with some dynamic. Or you know what? I probably don't even, it's not as exposed, so I probably don't even need to use dynamic EQ on that. I just roll it out. <laughs> Already better. See how much I can get away with. Pretty liar. Pretty liar. Pretty liar. Does it? Beneath a lot to find. But you really think who you are inside. I don't think I need to EQ the the reverbs at this point. I'm not hearing any like issues with them. I'm not picking up any issues. Um, so probably won't do it, you know, if it ain't broke. So please tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Pretty life. Pretty life. Oh, I love that decay. So please tell me lies. 
why don't I have to go to bed another lonely night? So why don't I have to go to bed another lonely night? So why don't I have to go to bed another lonely night? You see, why don't I have to go to bed another lonely night? So why don't I have to go to bed another lonely night? I'm just going to automate this down a little bit. Um, think. So why don't I have to go to bed another lonely night? You see, I don't mind. You can tell. Okay, I'm gonna maybe do something different. Moog, base Moog out, I'm gonna call this. I'm gonna drag this down and I'm just gonna process this a little bit differently. Clean up that mud. So why don't I have to go to bed another lonely night? You see, I don't mind. You can tell. So why don't I have to go to bed another lonely night? You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Okay. So please tell me lies. So why don't I have little trick up my sleeve before we bounce this for Dane. What's up, Dane? You are muted. muted. <laughs> What's up? What's up, man? How are y'all? Oh, doing great. Sounded good. I'm excited. I am yeah. thr thrilled to be here. This yeah, is, almost, uh, got, uh, almost got this ready for you. Incredible, man. So stoked got a solid group of people here holy smokes this is great how tall am i i'm six foot four <clears throat> no one's ever asked me you told him you were eight foot earlier so <clears throat> yeah <laughs> that would have been a slight exaggeration but eight foot six principal closer to eight foot than me yeah my brother's actually like six foot eight for real almost seven feet <clears throat> can't even imagine but he played uh he played in the olympics volleyball he was on the uh indoor volleyball olympic team in 2012 went to london so he put put it to good use <clears throat> didn't even have to jump i'm not quite as like coordinated like hand-eye coordination <laughs> i didn't didn't quite didn't quite get to his level <clears throat> Twist a mean knob, though, you know? Dude, twist I can twist. I can twist a few knobs. A mean a knob. mean mouse. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can do some really, like, hard limiting, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love it. All right, let's just uh, automate in a little bit of delay here, and then we'll send this off. Can I hear this garbage that you've been yeah, working on? Yeah, you can hear this trash. No one ever saw you cry. Behind your walls, you build so high so you won't fall. You saw tears 
in all my pain I will show it on my face So desperate for your love So please tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see, I don't That's enough. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add some delays. I'm going to twist some knobs first, and then we'll automate some things in. So please tell me lies. So I don't have to go. 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 <laughs> That's incredible. What's going on? <laughs> this, this, de this demonic voices pan left and right. <laughs> so please so tell me lies. So, tell me lies. so I don't have to go to go to go to. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to mute myself. So please. So please Tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see, I don't mind You can tell me anything to make me satisfied Pretty lie It's something around there so please tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see, I don't mind You can tell me anything to make me satisfied Pretty lie, pretty lie So please few things here i am going to smack this the signal with some sibilance on the way in and just like gut all of these s sounds s's and t's clearly gut them so please tell me lies so i don't have to go to bed Another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me so. Please tell me lies. Um, let's listen to this so we can dial it in. I'm just gonna go pre fader. So I don't have, I don't to, go have to go to bed another, another lonely, lonely night. night. You see, you see I don't, I don't mind. mind. You can tell, you can me, tell me anything to make, make me satisfied. Pretty lie. So please, so please tell me, tell lies. me lies. So I okay. So please, so please tell me, tell lies, me lies. So I don't, so I don't. So please, so please tell me, tell lies, me lies. So I don't, so 
really just crushing the S's on the signal before it hits the delay. So I don't get that. Tss, tss, right. So please, so please tell me tell lie. Me lie. Just crushing it with reckless well. abandon. Please tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell. Okay, cool. And what I'm going to do here is just dial this in to the choruses. So please tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see, I don't mind You can tell me anything to make me satisfied Pretty wild And going to take that long delay um, and we're going to do a little bit more automation on that. Just take it down for the hook. Yeah, it's always tricky when you have when you have like the delays, long delays that spill over. A lot of times people will forget that like it just will go. <laughs> it won't stop. So you have to truncate it like Jake's doing. <clears throat> Be satisfied. Pretty wild. Let's move it over just a bit. Pretty liar. Pretty liar. Okay, let's just dial that in for the rest of the track and then I'll bounce this and uh, send it over. Okay, 17, just a very subtle. So please tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see, I don't mind You can tell me anything to make me satisfied So please tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Pretty lie. Pretty
lies, tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell. Let's let that like fade out. Pretty liar. Perfect. Pretty liar. Pretty liar. Cool. So I think that's a wrap. I think that's a wrap on this one. So from uh, here, what we normally do is uh, a reference check. We would do a back and forth with the reference. We'd obviously show it to the client, do some back and forth there. So let's do a little bit of just like a little bit of paths. I would go in there. I'm seeing, you know, some build up here, right? Between five and fifteen hundred on the vocal. Please tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. I'm my, my mastering engineer. I might just go and tame that. Oh, you're welcome. Please tell me love me love. Try again. Try again, Jake. Tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed Another lonely night You see, I don't mind You can tell me anything To make me satisfied Pretty lies Tell me lies So I don't And I'm being just a little bit picky. Um, where are my plugins? Let's go to F6 again. And we'll just snatch that one note. I like the new one. The RTA. Please tell me lies. So I don't have to tell me lies. Right? So helpful. Please tell me lies. 
I could come down on all of those if I wanted to. Wanted to get real picky. Please tell me lies. So why don't have, why don't have... Are you just uh, looking at lies mostly? Yeah. <clears throat> Part. What? Please tell me lies. So I don't have. I don't have. Yeah. All these here. Please tell me lies. Please tell me lies. So I don't have to go. probably grab another one there but i think that's good enough good enough for now move on okay guys who wants to see dane master this track in less than three minutes <laughs> <clears throat> I uh, I I vetoed your timers a long time ago, dude. I just put a I just put a complete a wall up on that. <laughs> I noticed. All right, Dave, let's do it. Come on, Dwayne. So, Dwayne, 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 Jack, and Caitlin, do it, Diane. I haven't been called any female versions of my name quite yet. <clears throat> Kenny liked Diane. <laughs> oh, never mind. Dana. I have been. Dana. Dana. Forgot. <clears throat> Daniel. I've been called Daniel. I've been called Dana. I've been called Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne's my favorite, I think. <clears throat> you drop this uh dropping now upload now it's in our slack channel sweet is uh are you dming me or just in fix the mix channel uh dm I broke the rule. I gave you like, I'm hitting around three. Oh, in master. Room? Yeah. Shame on you. Yeah. So the target guys is minus six. I'm hitting like minus three. On the it's a super target. dynamic song. It's pretty dynamic. If I get something like that from a client, when I've asked them for minus six, um, as long as it's not clipping, you can just put a game plugin on it and just turn yep. it down or just do like clip gain automation to, or clip gain um, reduction. Turn it down. Yeah. Attenuation. Oh, I see it. I've got it here. Got it? Yeah. Let me, before I share my screen, let me just grab this on my desktop. Yes. Caleb was in the big Lebowski. Yep, I uh, I really loved making that film. It really played, underpaid me, though, to be honest. He played both um, Jeff Bridges' character and John Goodman's character. <laughs> uh, oddly enough, not many people know this. Uh, body oh, by DoorDash. Somebody died <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Okay, we're doing good. Let's uh let's, let's do this. Let's do this. All right. 30 uh 30 seconds on the clock, Dane. <laughs> <laughs> you guys yeah. ready for Dane? You guys ready for Dane to master this thing? 
By the way, we just hit five hours on this session. Wow. Oh, all that's uh, beefy. Over wow. 500 of you have remained the entire time. Unbelievable. My hat is completely off. What's oh. wrong with you people? <laughs> Love it. All righty. All right. One's for Dane. Let's go. You guys probably can't hear this yet. Let me grab my settings. Got a lot of ones. A lot of pressure here. A lot of riding on this. Nice. Let's break. So interestingly, like the bridge, you know, a lot of times your chorus is the biggest section, but in this case, I would argue that the bridge just has the most energy, perhaps. Uh, and so I'm thinking, you know, normally I would probably loop the, you know, I would loop the chorus section, but in this case, I'm actually going to loop this bridge just because there's a lot happening there. That's where the track peaks the loudest. So just giving you a little bit of my thought process before we jump right in with processing. There, I'm done. <laughs> Sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> right there. <laughs> just didn't need all that stuff Re down. Really there. tightened up the low end. Yeah, I just, I, I figured. <laughs> Super tight. I, yeah, I figured you just kind of messed this part up, so I'd, I would just not even worry about it. Huh. Good. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Bring it down. Let me go into this guy here. Yep. Ah, a little deuce coop. That REQ is great. So simple. I love Old it. Old standby, you know, like. Yeah. Beneath a lot to find what you really think, who you are inside. Oh, you want. Cool. I'm actually going to do something a little bit naughty, maybe. Uh oh. Thinking Kayla might squirm a little bit in this chair. Uh oh. Here. Let's see. A little Kramer tape, maybe. Is there a mix? Beneath a lot to find what you really see. Beneath a lot to find what you really see. Beneath a lot to find what you really see. 
I'm going to do. A, I'm a fan. It's kind of cool, right? Like tape just does this like natural kind of like a little bit of a lift, a little bit of like a low end bump. Yeah, really it nice hits, lift. I really the, like, yeah, I really it, like that. It's kind of cool. Sometimes I'll use the Saturn as well, but Kramer, it's rad. I love it. <clears throat> And we've also gained a little bit of headroom too in that section. And then I'm just going to follow. We're not going to go like super deep here, guys, into like the mastering process. We'll explain a little bit here and there, but. Yeah, I'm just going to do just a touch more. I'm going to master this thing now. <laughs> Beneath, I like to find what you really see, who you are inside. I am still happy with the low end on that. It's a little squishier than I would like it to be. I would spend a, a lot of time like dialing that in. Oh, okay. in the mi in the mix, you're saying? Yeah. I need more. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. So I don't have to go to bed So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. One of my favorite is the, let's see. Yeah, there's like too much buildup in that area. Like the low mids and the, the low end is what I mean by like squishier. You know, it sounds kind of, kind of muddy, right? There's like a muddiness to it. It's munching up a lot of sonic energy. Right, it's taking away from the 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 uh, a ple the pleasing balance of the mix. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell. I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. So 
That's better. Yeah, I don't think I want to compress this at all. Just like limiting, clipping, and da, 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 da. like the maximizer and the limiter. I might do. I might do, I might do just this guy. Bring this down for your guys' ears. Yeah. So why don't I have to go to And the limiter on. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. A little too cooked. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. That's pretty much it. I might uh might touch it a little bit with um yeah, kind of humming and hawing here. Uh let me just listen to the beginning. usually do this but um i'm gonna just barely barely tap it with uh i knew it drink Saw you cry. 
need to sometimes I'll use the YSDS to do this as well. Oops. Come on. Give this a nice narrow. Probably gonna be up towards like 10k. No one never saw you cry. No one never saw you cry. Saw you hide behind your walls. You build so high so you won't fall. It's only. What's that? Maybe mids only. No one never saw you cry. You're saying to grab only the mids? Yeah. It's in left right mode now. You can change it to a mid mode on Soothe. Yeah, I haven't even messed with this yet. Yeah, so balance knob. Yeah, and then you just switch the balance knob from mid side to mid. Yeah, if you wanted oh, to. I got just, it. it was just a only yeah, side yeah. versus only mid. That's cool, actually. No one ever saw you cry. Saw you hide behind you. I actually like it. No one ever saw you cry. Okay, so when you said mid, I, I thought you were talking about mid frequencies, Jake. I was like, oh, no. I'm just I was, my brain was starting to melt down. I was like, what is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so, I was like, where exactly? No one ever saw I'm going to make this a little bit sharper. Just to make it more transparent. No one ever saw you cry. Yeah, this is one of those things where I probably just go back and forth between Jake and maybe. Yeah. Yeah. This was honestly the the thought I had when I initially Jake's ears are burned, you know, in in a, an entire five hour session, and so this is where kind of that either him taking a break and coming back to it and listening to it right would probably give him that clarity but me as fresh years i came in one of my thoughts was okay when i master this i'm probably going to have to be really careful with the high end because of just the vocal alone that's it um the vocal i would say was exactly where i would want it to be had it not gone through mastering right but i'm thinking of kind of the entirety of the track and all that stuff no one ever saw you cry just a little no one ever saw you cry no one ever saw you cry saw you hide behind your walls you build so the concern is this section please tell me lies so i don't have to go to bed another lonely night you see I have to make a little bit of a trade off here. Please. Chorus work. So high, so you won't fall. Certainly a lot better than that. So high. And I would also probably just come back and where am I? Go to my SSLG. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not really even. I look back a little bit. Yeah, it's it probably just doesn't need any of that. So. so, high, so you won't fall. it's crazy though you hear you listen to like ariana grande's like vocals and Too man much. those are cooked in the high end yeah so it's, much. it's crazy so you know it all just depends it's uh you know i would we would we would do a little bit of back and forth with ej on this and and he might have some things to say and we'd just we'd go accordingly from there so but yeah let me just continue listening through the, to the first course and then be done Build so high so you won't fall you saw tears in all my pain i will show it on my face so desperate for your love so please yeah it's catching that right there just turn the depth down a little bit like this so please so please so please i might just automate it literally so please 
not something I'd typically do, but you know. So I'm gonna bring it down just for that. It's only a problem if it's noticeable. Rack shack. So please tell me lies. Yeah. So once again, guys, this is not the normal process. Yeah. So please tell me lies. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. You can tell me anything to make me satisfied. Pretty liar. Pretty liar. So please tell me lies So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night You see, I don't mind You can tell me anything to make me satisfied Pretty liar, pretty liar all right yeah again we do some more back and forth and there's like five or ten percent more refinement we do and we will do with the client as we move on from this watch for this song it'll be released probably i don't know a few months Next couple months yeah. we try to just do a, a quick before and after all plugins just to see if we made it any better <laughs> yay nay before yep. and after oh yeah real quick yeah, always always ab okay so I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. You see, I don't mind. Yeah, for me, it's all about just kind of going back to the vocal, but uh, listening to everything else. Let's bring this down. So I don't have to go to bed another lonely night. Cool. I think we enhanced it. Uh, 
didn't have to do a ton. As you can see, my EQ moves on the, the SSL, very, very minimal, right? Like a DB here, nothing here on the high end, taking away a little bit of the, the mud and, and, and only a DB there. Uh, so yeah, we're adding a little bit of low end with the, the Puig tech here, a little bit of low end bump, getting some saturation in there, some clipping. Yeah, very trying to be transparent because the mix I thought was good. So we'll leave it at that. Cool, cool. Everyone, uh, now it's your turn, of course. It's on you now. Fix any remaining issues you have with the, the Vox using these frequency tools. I mean, you had five or six plugins on there. You built some buckets. He controlled some dynamics, but a lot of what he did was all that gain automation. Go through and see what that uh, is like for you. See if you can find a way to really connect with the emotion and bring it out. Spatial processing, use your buckets. Love to hear the final, uh, final mix. See if you can do it better. Beat us out. I love it. Getting the light show ready, Jake. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at those rainbows. That's what I'm talking about. Look at. Wait, hold on. Play some music. They mm. respond to music. Mm. They react. Mm. Mm. They react to music just like me. Hold on. Uh, really glad so many of you signed up to book a call to come work with us uh look forward to working with a lot of you on the inside we'll we'll get down get to business but get ready to work because that's what it's all about we work really hard but we want to be the best and we want our students to be the best There's only one way to do it so in the meantime if we don't see you maybe down the road thanks for this fix the mix august 2023 until next time, have a good one, guys. Thanks, Dane. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, everybody. Much love to all of you. Be safe. Keep creating. Adios, everyone.